Moncton Mustangs got a big win last week against Nova Scotia. They're looking to continue their hot play against the Island Mariners here at Rocky Stone Field in Moncton, New Brunswick. It is the Maritime Football League on Rogers TV. Mike Sanderson alongside Vince Williams. And for the Mustangs, a big 21-0 win last week in Nova Scotia. They're looking to continue their hot play this week with the Mariners in town. Absolutely. These two teams matched up in the very last regular season game where the playoffs were on the line. Then the Mariners, then were the privateers, lost that game on the very last play where we had a controversial catch, no catch decision made by the officials down on the field and the Monk the Mustangs went on to the playoffs. So this afternoon these two teams are looking to hook up again. The Mariners coming into this 0-2, excuse me, looking to get their very first win, and the Mustangs continuing the roll and get their third win on the season. Yeah, the Mariners, very interesting story. You mentioned the former PEI privateers. Uh, they've rebranded a little bit, embracing the youth on their roster. A lot of veterans are gone. A lot of new faces are in the lineup, and when that happens, youth sometimes comes with growing pains. You mentioned 0-2. for 2. They've scored 19 points at 13 in their last game. What do you think their biggest key is coming into this one? Try the mesh and try to get some cohesiveness on the offensive side. Gone is their veteran quarterback, Tex Munch. In is their star running back, Clark. Now, Clark has been a great running back. Dave Clark has been a running back throughout this this, uh, this league as its conception, excuse me, when they were the privateers. He used to, he's a great running back, but making that transition from running back to quarterback is going to be a big thing for him. And you can see in the points that they've scored, you see it's been a little bit of a struggle. But this afternoon, they're going to go up against a very tough Moncton Mustangs defense, and it's going to be a tough task for Dave Clark this afternoon. Yeah, we talk about Dave Clark. We can look at the quarterback, the other way, the decision maker for the Mustangs, Dan Comfort, who had another great game in a 21 nothing win last week. As we've mentioned, what do you like about the uh, Mount A quarterback? Well, he can do two things. He can run with the football when he has the opportunity if the pocket breaks down, but he's got good vision downfield, and he's able to hit his receivers. He's had a, He had an outstanding game last week against the Nova Scotia Buccaneers where he was able to hook up with his wide receivers for some big gains, and that was the reason why they were able to go and win that game going away. But but I like the way he can spread around the football and make sure he manages the football game. He doesn't turn the football over, and he doesn't take sacks for losses. Yeah, and he's a big body, too, at 5'11", 220, at only 22 years old. He's one of the captains of the Mustangs as we see them come out to a hearty applause here at Rocky Stone Field. The Mustangs, again, we talked 1-1 one one on the season. They are second in points for and second in points against as well. Only one point back of the St. John at Wanderers. And uh, to get this offense going, we mentioned Comfort. We mentioned the defense. Who's going to be catching those passes for Comfort? Who's the big keys there? Well, last week it was an explosive offense, and there was a few key plays. And in particular, number 10 is uh, Gladian Mulalu, who's been an outstanding offensive player. He had an outstanding game last week against the Nova Scotia the Buccaneers where he caught a hitch pass about 60 yards out and was able to take it to the house, break a tackle and run straight up the sidelines and he was untouched. So he's got a lot of speed and a lot of strength and ability to go up for the football and fight for it if he's up against a defensive back. So look to, for comfort to hook up with Malali in that offensive passing game. Yeah, Malali, the Nigerian wide receiver. They've got a number of wide receivers in and really you talk about the depth of this Mustangs team. It's practically a 53-man roster and that's something rarely seen in the Maritime Football League, which is a senior league, but you got to come out to play, and the Mustangs bring a ton of depth at every position. Absolutely. They are loaded at the offense and defensive line and the linebacker position. Um, they have probably more players on their roster than a 53-man <laughs> roster at the U Sports level, and it's only 10-man football. So, And it's a great afternoon where it's not too hot, it's not too humid, um, it's perfect football weather, so I look to see if a lot of guys getting an opportunity to play this afternoon for the Mustangs. Yeah, we were talking about this before we went to air. It's the only kind of weather where the small guys and the big fat guys can really agree that it's great football weather. It's about 20 degrees, overcast, no rain. It's perfect weather to let the passes loose or to stick with that ground game. Absolutely, and we're going to see it happen. I think uh, the, the Mariners are definitely going to look to the running game with their option quarterback and Dave Clark, and Comfort's probably going to look to look, you know open it up a little bit offensively 
defensively with his wide receivers and slot backs. And don't forget their running back. Aubrey Ellis is a good running back. Went over 100 yards last week against the Nova Scotia Buccaneers, and he's been a high performer for this uh, Mustangs team on a numerous amount of years. If you look back at the major awards last season, he was the most outstanding rookie of the team, so Ellis can get it done on the ground. Yeah, the main ball carrier for them. And another guy to look for with the Mariners is Eugene McMinns, number seven, who is in the lineup to catch some passes from Dave Clark, was the most outstanding receiver last year as well. Absolutely. McMinns is a, is a unique story. He also plays for the Holland College uh, the, the team over there on the island. And most of the players, some of the players from the Mariners are making that transition from the AFL to this league. So they use this league, the Maritime Football League, as much of a training facility on the off season to carry over to their regular season in their uh, collegiate ca uh, careers. Yeah, a number of uh, CISU sports players uh, in both lineups and a connection, of course, with Eugene McMims and head coach Zach Davidson as well. Uh, but first off, before the game, we've got the anthems. So we're going to go to O Canada. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, and all our sons command. With glowing hearts we see the rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. And with that, it is time for some football. It is the hashtag Becca Bowl tonight in honor of Rebecca Schofield. All proceeds from the gate admission donated to Rebecca Schofield and her family. The Mustangs looking to spread her hashtag Becca told me to campaign, which has been absolutely outstanding over the past year or so. In case you don't know, Rebecca Schofield, 17-year-old Riverview native with cancer, has inspired not only the town of Riverview, but also the whole world with that hashtag Becca told me to campaign. And that's... Uh, a lot of the reason why you know we're very happy to be here and bring this game for you today on Rogers TV. Mike Sanders and Vince Williams, and you know the the Becca Schofield uh, situation. Hashtag Becca told me to. It's touched lives all around the world. Absolutely, he's definitely gone viral, and uh, everybody knows about it and knows the fight that she's uh, in and what she's up against. And she's a very young, brave girl. Yeah, you can follow the hashtag at hashtag Becca Bowl. Uh, the Moncton Mustangs were a big push in getting that one together, and you can see that hashtag just there on the screen. Hashtag Becca told me to beside the Moncton score and the quarter marker. And we are just about set to go. It will be the Mustangs kicking off and the Mariners to receive as Scott LeBlanc will come on out to kick the 29-year-old kicker. Finally able to get some time in from work commitments and be able to play full-time with the Moncton Mustangs in his second year. A former All-Star at the uh, New Brunswick Interscholastic level, the CJFL and the OFC. Uh, glad to see him in the lineup as he sets up with the tee and ready to kick it off here. In the return for the Mariners, it looks like uh, number seven there, and that is McMims. So McMims can go. Uh, the Mustangs have to be very careful, make sure that they stay in their lanes when they kick this one off, and don't overcommit and not allow McMims to get on the outside because he can break it for the big one. That's McMims and Cunningham on the back end for the Mariners. We'll see where they kick. They're going to go Cunningham's way, but it doesn't get quite that far. It lands at about the 41. It'll be the Mustangs to touch it. And field position for the Mariners looking all right at about the 41-yard line. They'll start it off here. Dave Clark will hand the keys to the offense. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, Mike, it looks like it's a turnover because it looks like an onside kick. It looks like there was some confusion in that return game for the Mariners as the Mustangs came up with possession of the football. So on that live ball, no communication between the upbacks there for the Mariners, and they didn't jump on that football. And an opportunity for the Mustangs here to get uh, some early points. Get great read there, Vince, as we see it come here. A great recovery by the Mustangs to carry this offense. So Dan Comfort with a back. 
Comfort in the pocket will pass it off and it's caught there for a gain of about eight by Chris Brown, the wide receiver getting a touch here early. Yeah, you can see that the Mustangs are coming out very aggressive right off the jump. They're looking to put some points on the board, go straight to the passing game and a very good gain on the first down, a manageable second down here to set up for the Mustangs. Second and two for the Moncton team. His comfort looked very solid with a quick toss. They flag down with a decline here as Comfort will set in. Got two men in the backfield along with him and four wide. It is 10-man football, only three linemen in most cases. Comfort will take the snap. He'll hand it off. And a nice run there to get the first by Aubrey Ellis. Yeah, Ellis didn't waste no time of getting his uh, shoulders upfield and he knew how many yards he needed to get for that Aubrey first down, so a good pick up on the ground and that's what you get from Ellis. You get positive yardage, getting those hips and those shoulders upfield and pouring downfield. You can see a good toss by Comfort and Ellis wait, make, making no mistake getting downfield and making sure he pick up that first down. Yeah, first down is very key and Mustangs very aggressive as you mentioned Vince early on in this first quarter. Comfort in the shotgun. He'll hand it off again to Ellis, who will break free. Ellis finds some daylight to the right side. One man to beat. He's taken down. And the ball is loose. But is he down before that ball came out? The tackle, Neil Cunningham. Yeah, it looks like he was called by, down by contact, but an outstanding vision and a beautiful draw play drawn up by the Mustangs oh, yeah. here as Ellis was just, he was free and he didn't have a, a defender to take a look here. Ellis breaking up downfield, looking good block there by number 81, Josh Dickinson, as he was able to break free, just couldn't break that tackle and get over the goal line. But you can see the ground game being very successful in, the, in this first drive for the Mustangs. Ellis has been solid running to both sides and we'll see what the call is from Comfort with the first and goal at about the two yard line. Comfort again, the handoff will go to Ellis. Ellis will drive on through, touchdown Mustangs! Yeah, no doubt, you knew they were gonna hand it off to Ellis as the running game's been very good and very reliable as Ellis was able to get his shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage and a two yard plunge. Nice blocking up front by the big boys for the Mustangs. You can see that double block and that kick out block by the tight end, number 11, and, that, and he was able to free up that uh, Aubrey Ellis and Ellis just basically walks in as he powers over that linebacker. As four plays results in the first score for the Mustangs and a botched snap is grabbed there by number 15 Stevie Cormier but he couldn't make much with it so the PAT is squandered but 6 nothing the lead for the Mustangs and a very quick score for Moncton. Yeah definitely not the start for the Mariners there as they had miscommunication on that kickoff. The up back's not communicating and jumping on that live ball, so not the start that the Mariners wanted coming into this one. As you can take a look here, a low snap goes right through the hands of the All-Star and uh, the MVP of this league numerous times, Steve Cormier. Cormier playing out of position this year, playing defensive end. That guy has been an outstanding running back throughout his career in the MFL. And if there was a Hall of Fame, he would be a first ballot Hall of Famer in the running back position for sure. Yeah, if you look at the list, nine-time All-Star, two-time league MVP, three-time most outstanding line, or running back. It's pretty prestigious. MFL All-Decade team. And he said this is his last year, but he's been saying it for a number <laughs> of years. There's a few guys in the Maritime Football League have said it's their last season. And every time I come out, I see the same guys out there grinding. So we'll see. Yeah, him on the defensive end, him and DJ Carmichael, who we're going to see to work. They both said it's their last year this year, led the team in the top two in tackles last season as the kick ends up out of bounds into the Mustangs area. So the Mariners will start it off at around the 35. So finally they'll get their opportunity to see what the offense can do in moving the football down the field. But this is a big possession here for the Mariners as they need to get some type of drive going here to give their defense an opportunity to get a breather. Yeah, they got to have a long drive and they've got quite a bit of field to go. Looks like it's spotted around the 32. So just about two and a half minutes into this opening quarter, the Mariners already in a hole. Dave Clark will have some room to work with and we'll see what he goes with. It's three men wide and a man in the backfield from the back. No, it's an empty backfield. There's a man way back there. Clark 
will hand it off. Trying to break through and held way back. Ryan Dempsey and tackled behind the line of scrimmage by a number of Mustangs jumping in. Yeah, that front three for the Mustangs is going to be very stout this afternoon as the Mariners have to be very good and make sure that they sustain their blocks if they're going to get any type of running game going as that front three, very good for the Mustangs. As you can see, those big those guys are very big boys in the front, the front, uh, the front three. And if they're going to do anything, they better make sure that they stay on their blocks. That is the Mariners. Yeah, it's Blake Alain, Felix LeBlanc, Brandon Colwell, the front three for the Mustangs. They all had a hand in taking Dempsey down. So second down and what looks to be again ten. Time of full backfield. Clark has to scramble a bit. He's on the run. He'll go for it himself and takes a look. He'll have the first down and maybe more. He'll stick in the left sideline. Cuts back to the middle. He's got some daylight. He's taken down by Jamie Drisdell in the backfield. But that's a huge run for Clark, who is a running back by trade. No surprise if he can just tuck that shoulder down and make his way through. He got a big gain there. Absolutely. Clark, pocket breaking down, and he just busts out and... The running back just kicks in as he was able to beat Cormier at the corner and down the sidelines. If he needed one more block to get there, he just couldn't get it done. But a good tackle in the open field by Drysdale saved a touchdown. But that's what you get from Dave Clark. He's going to give you that opportunity when he drops back into the pocket. So the Mustangs need to make sure that they key and make sure that they keep him within the pocket and not allow him to get outside because he can hurt you. That's where those option quarterbacks can really get dangerous as Clark now with the handoff to Dempsey. A botched handoff ball is loose but it's recovered. Looks to be my McMinns. A nice job by McMinns to jump in and grab that ball before it got dangerous but a botched first down for the Mariners and second down and about 11. Yeah a lot of problems here between the exchange of Clark and his running back there. Running back took his eyes off that that ball, was looking downfield before he secured the football. But if you're the Mariners, you can't afford to turn the football over on the road, especially early in this first quarter after the Mustangs put some points on the board. you got to respond with at least a field goal off of this drive. Yeah, it's how much ball control is a factor. And the handoff and communication between the quarterback and his various backs definitely comes into play. Clark, a quick throw. McMinns couldn't handle it. And it'll be third down quickly. Yeah, McMims has to come up with that as we have a man down for the Mariners as the running back slash fullback number 44 is down for the Mariners. And that's Ryan Dempsey. So that's not a good thing right now for the Mariners. As you can see on that screenplay, McMims has to come up with that football as it looked like Dempsey tried to take on the blocker there as Blake Allen blew him up. And it looks like his foot got caught maybe in the turf there, and it looks like maybe a lower body injury. And we hope that uh, he's able to, you know, recover from this. You don't like to see guys go down and, and not being able to finish out a football game. So let's hope that Dempsey's all right and able to come back into this one. Yeah, Dempsey is a big factor in the running game for the Mariners. Got lit up by Blake Allen trying to get to the quarterback and rush him in. And it looked like uh, one of his ankles got pushed or at least a knee or right. any kind of situation there. So you hope that uh, Dempsey's okay and able to come back into this one. But a very manageable football on that screen pass for McMinns. But he's got to come up with that football. They had some good blocking set up in that screen there as they were able to, their wide receivers and their slot backs were able to sustain their blocks. It looked like there was an alley there, an opportunity for McMinns to get some ground down the field just unable to come up with the football. On a screen pass, you've got to secure the catch first before you decide that you're going to get downfield. You can't get caught looking downfield to see where the defenders are before you gain possession of the football. Yeah, Mariners looking at that 6-0 lead and maybe thinking, well, we got to strike back and strike back quickly, but you got to have the ball first. It's a long football game. There's a lot of opportunities throughout this football game. It's your first possession. You're, you had a botch situation on the return game and the kickoff game, and now you have an opportunity now to at least put three points on the board. You can't go back, but if you're the Mustangs, you got to get some pressure on the quarterback. You got to get in the backfield, and you got to make sure that you keep Dave Clark in that backfield and not allow him to get into the open field because he can hurt you, and he hurts you with a 20 yard plus gain on that second down on their own side of the field. And that's the reason why they're in striking distance right now here in the Mustangs' end. Yeah, for the Mariners, it is 0 2 so far this year, a 20 6 loss in Cornwall on May 27th. The bit of a 
reboot or such tales of the PEI Privateers. Mariners coming back and then 37 to 13 to St. John in St. John, but that's kind of a tale of the whole yeah, league is St. John, four-time Maritime Bowl champions straight to the last four. Mustangs know well about that as they were in that championship game last year. Yeah, the Wanderers are definitely the team to beat in this uh, in this league, and they've been the team to beat for some time. Uh, both of those teams, though, had some pretty good runs. That is the Mustangs and the, the Wanderers, where they were dynasties, where they won four straight championships. So this Mustangs organization, they know how to win championships. They know how to get there. Their head coach, Jason Terrace, has been part of that dynasty. They're, they're used to be their running back. Now their defensive end linebacker, Steve Cormier, knows how to taste from how to you know the taste feels like or or the flavor of, of the champagne from that championship because he was on those dynasty teams so this mustang team and the organization know how to get it done it's just that big puzzle standing in the way and that's the mariners sorry excuse me that's the wanderers as i mixed that up the wanderers the mariners <laughs> haven't gotten there yet they're still trying to catch their strider and get their first win under the new name it is the Mariners ahead of them right now on the field as Dempsey makes his way off and we're just about ready for uh, what looks to be the restart of this one as Dave Clark will get his hands back on the football. A very key third down early here, third down at about 10 and a half here on this 36-yard line, Moncton 36. In comes Clark, has got one man in the back and four out wide. He's definitely got options available Clark with the toss in the back end. McMinns will look to make a jump through, but he cannot get to the sticks. A good gain, but not enough here on fourth down as McMinns will make it into that fourth down situation. Might be a position to get that field goal. Yeah, absolutely. They might uh, want to bring out the kicking game, but it looks like they're going for it as there's a conference between the head coach and the uh, the quarterback in Dave Clark as it looks like they're going for it. And they're making the, the adjustment as moving... McMinns from the wide receiver slot back position to the running back position and that was a very good gain on his first carry on the afternoon. Yeah, I'd like to see him get some more touches of the football and that's a good way to do it as well. Looks like they're going for it. Fighting aggressiveness with aggressiveness in the case of the Mariners. The Mustangs will be blitzing quite a few. They toss it back to McMinns. This time taking the right side. He's met by Drisdale. He'll shag him off. Now another move. He's got some daylight now. He's looked to push back out. He might shake off another tackle but he's out as Giza Mingui was able to get his paws on him before he could get to the house. But a very nice run from McMinns on that one in a first round for the Mariners. Well, if you're head coach Jason Terrace and he's a defensive style and he knows everything about defense, you can see in this replay an outstanding play there defensively coming up, but he was a little too high on that tackle. And McMinns did an outstanding job as he was able to stiff arm and individually break away from that. But they had him in the backfield. They made the right defensive call, but the defense just couldn't execute that defensive play. But they need to have that loss in the backfield but you can see the adjustments made by the Mariners putting McMinns in the backfield using his athletic ability and his strength to break tackles has been a dividend in this particular drive. Yeah Drysdale went too low as the Mariners go for the end zone that one caught for a touchdown yeah, and they went right back to McMinns and he just ran a streak from the wide open position so as you can see, head coach for the Mariners using McMinns, his offensive weapon, knowing that, you know, they're up against it. And that's a beautiful toss by Clark, untouched in the backfield. He was able to run away as McMinns. And the strength and ability to battle up in a beautiful catch as he was able to go up and over the defender in the back of the end zone. Outstanding play there by McMinn. So making that move, putting him into the running back position and then switching him over to his natural position at wide receiver pays dividends for this drive for the Mariners. Yeah, Tyler Cameron on the coverage, but only 5'10", would have needed about another ladder to be able to reach up and grab that one. Yeah, McMinn's beat him right off the, 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 right off the snap there, Mike, and he was able to gain separation. And it just he was winning that jump ball. Flag up on it. Kick is good. The flag is on the field, and we'll see what this one will end up being. Yeah, it looks like an offside on the Mustangs as they moved and jumped early. As the head official on the afternoon, Patrick Fairweather, makes the call, and it looks definitely look like it'll be a five-yard penalty 
on the Mustangs, and they'll move five yards up a little bit closer to the goal line for uh, the Mariners. So the Mariners responding after giving up that touchdown on that good drive by the Mustangs. Yes, uh, that's exactly what the Mariners wanted, exactly what the recipe called for. As 7-6 seven, six the score now with the Maritime Football League on Rogers TV. Mike Sanderson along with Vince Williams bringing you the call here from Rocky Stone Field. Mariners got a very quick comeback on the very quick score from the Mustangs as they'll now kick it out to the back. It's Glodin Malali and Akeem White, the kick returners for the Mustangs. We'll see which side they prefer. And these guys can take it to the house if they give the opportunity to think that if they can get their shoulders square and get upfield. They're just a one cut away from breaking it to the house. So if they can get some good blocking by the upbacks for the Mustangs and can set up that return wall, they should be able to take it all the way. If I'm the Mariners, I might want to take it that away from them and kick this one short and try to put it into the upback area. Might be the option for the Mariners. Take your way through. They're going to go high and out, but this will end up outside. And Yeah, very poor kick there. Um, they used to try to get that onside kick, try to take advantage of that five-yard penalty, and they were gambling. So you can see gambling on fourth down on that last drive and gambling on that onside kick that they want nothing to do with special teams this afternoon of the Mustangs. Yeah, that's very clear and giving the Mustangs some very good field position at their own 54. So we'll see what Dan Comfort can do with his second time. Only took him four plays to take it to the house last drive and we'll see what he's got here with a fresh first and ten. I see nothing changing in the offensive game plan for the Mustangs. Just try to grind the football out, give the ball to Ellis on first down and see what he can do and let the big boys do their job up front. That's exactly the case. Ellis with a nice spin move. He's able to gain about seven. If you can get seven yards on every carry and have possession of the football plus eating up the clock, I'll take that any day. As long as the exchange between quarterback and running back is solid and that running back is getting downfield and going downfield and make sure he's not losing any yardage, you can do that all game long. It'll be Ellis in the backfield, pretty much a permanent fixture for him. Five wide for comfort, three in motion. Ellis in motion as well, they hand it off. And up with the run is Matt Rose. He's got some daylight to the left side. He's got some room, one man to beat. And he's taken down there by Neil Cunningham, but an excellent breakout, Matt Rose making his way to the left side. Yeah, that's a beautiful uh, slot back reverse by Eastern Matt Rose, Eastern who's no stranger to the U Sports. Played at collegiate ball at Mount Allison University. Beautifully set up, as you can see, just getting downfield. Good block there in the open field. Dickinson once again opened up that lane. He's able to break a tackle. He's one tackle away from taking it to the house. So great vision on that run. And a quick throw from Comfort is caught for the touchdown. That's Josh Dickinson, the veteran, able to grab that one and make his way across. Another quick touchdown for the Mustangs. It's a high-scoring affair already. Yeah, beautiful strike there as Dickinson was able to gain separation. Just a quick slant, no pressure on the quarterback, an easy catch and throw. And Dickinson did the rest as he was able to get himself into the end zone as he was able to avoid that tackle. So great pattern by Dickinson and a beautiful delivery by Comfort putting it right in the numbers. Yeah, Dickinson able to sneak his way in front of the front men and before he could get in the backfield of the DBs and found a spot there to make a nice catch. As the point after is good from Scott LeBlanc. is now 13-7 to in favor of the Mustangs. And that's what veterans do on football teams. As the, the last possession down, Dickinson was the blocker. He was able to open the open field and seal that block on the edge for Ellis in the first possession. In the first uh, first possession in the second drive, he was able to secure that block for a Rose, and then he was able to get rewarded with that touchdown on that quick slant. So veteran guys know how to get it done. They know that it, their block the blocking game is just as important as them making be as them being pass receivers and making catches and running good routes. And that was a good play by Comfort and Dickinson to hook up for that touchdown. Then you find Ellis in the backfield as well who came out almost like he was going to run on a toss right. but instead playing great on the block on both the last two plays there buying comfort enough time to find Dickinson wide open in the mid mid game or so and yeah. Dickinson able to make his way in for the touchdown as LeBlanc will kick it now to the Mariners to kick off their next possession. 
We've seen a lot of onside kicks, though, so far. And maybe another trick up the sleeve of the Mustangs. No, this one. <laughs> Once again, an onside <laughs> kick, and they come up with it. They do come up with it again. So it's a penalty on the play, and I'm not sure if this is... Usually don't see that type of penalty. That might be interference on a loose ball called, as uh, might be called on the Mariners, but the Mustangs came up with the possession there, and it could be called on... As we take a look at the replay here, another onside kick, beautifully, beautifully done there by LeBlanc. He put it in an area where there was nobody but his own teammates there, but I'm not sure what that penalty is all about. So we can get the, see if I can get the call here by Patrick Fairweather, the head man on the afternoon, and it looks like it was definitely on the kicking team, and it looked like it was interference on a loose ball. So definitely the guy that came downfield looking for the possession of the football interfered with the receiving team and didn't allow him to get an opportunity to come up with that uh, onside kick. So a break for the Mariners here on that onside kick. It was beautifully done, but if you're the Mariners, you got to be ready for something like that, especially when you already saw it in the first kickoff. Yeah, no, you hit the nail right on the head. Was Akeem White with the recovery, but all for naught as Dave Clark will get another chance here for the Mariners as it's been score, score, score. will be ready to go here. Clark back in the shotgun. The man loose before the snap. Yeah, early movement up front. It looks like a legal procedure on the offense for the Mariners. Miscommunication on the snap count. Yeah, Chris Murphy jumped up early. You'll see it here. Legal procedure again. Right there. Yeah, a little too anxious to seal the edge in the running game. So, not the start in their second possession for the Mariners. That now comes back in first and 15 for Island. A switch up front for the Mustangs as Colwell is out and Cain Augustine, who just signed his commit with St. Mary's Huskies this week. Will draw in as Clark goes to his right. He's got a little bit of scrambling to do, but he can find the hole and he'll make his way back up past the line of scrimmage. A big hit there from Stevie Cormier, but he's able to make his way down about back to that 10 spot. But you can see the ability to scramble when things break down in the pocket. A good cut there as he was able to avoid the tackler there is Clark. Good ball movement and moving the ball around, changing hands while in stride. That's Carmichael jumping in at the tail end to be the hero as Augustine had them all wrapped up, but it was Carmichael jumping back in and a big block from Cormier as well to finally take him down. Took a number of Mustangs to finally put Clark to the turf. He'll have the handle now at second down and about eight in the pocket. He'll tee up looking long, but that one too far and a flag down. Yeah, they're going to have pass interference here on Bobby McIntyre. As the receivers didn't have any opportunity to gain space there. It looked like his progress was impeded. That was an easy call, a pass interference call, and then it'll be 15 yards and an automatic first down. As we take a look here, the ball looked like it might have been uncatchable, but you can see the collision in the open field. Take your pick. It's either legal, uh, legal contact or pass interference because the ball's in the air and it's going down to that uh, receiver. It's pass interference and not a legal contact. Sebastian Roy Garant tried an attempt at that, but got tied up with Bobby McIntyre making his way out there, and that will make the pass interference call. So a fresh set of downs for Dave Clark to jump in for. Clark, of course, replacing Tex Much, who moved to Nunavut to take a teaching job. Tex was a very good quarterback as... There Big it is. Take down in the back end. Yeah, Stevie Cormier coming off the edge, able to shed his block. Good call defensively by the Mustangs as they were able to apply some pressure and get in there quickly as they were Cormier, the veteran, 
Able to break off his block there at number 91. And Felix LeBlanc getting it done. So that's the type of defense that they need. They need to make sure that Clark doesn't get on the edge and get into the open field and get and make sure he doesn't turn those shoulders and hips downfield because he can hurt you in the running game. That's the kind of defense that Jason Terrace is known for. Jason Terrace coached teams and Dom Contois getting in there as the defensive coordinator this year having an effect there, but they took Clark down far from the line of scrimmage. LeBlanc and Cormier half sack each as Clark right under center for second down. He'll pull back three steps. Intercepted! That's picked up by Drysdale. He's going to make his way to the center. He's still got room blowing a couple of blocks, but McMims takes him down. Turnover for the Mustangs as they'll get the offense back on track. Yeah, very good defensive call there. You can see the pressure coming up top. Time, and that's a poor pass there attempt by Clark, he just threw it right into the hands of Drysdale, who's just waiting for it. And a good block and a hit in the open field by McMinns, but the possession and the turnover game, that battle being won thus far for the Mustangs. And this is the separation between winning and losing, especially on the road. When you're fighting for your first win, you can't allow the you can't have those type of mistakes in big opportunities. Yeah, it's those Little details that have to come into effect to be able to pick up your wins as Ellis is dragged down but pulled for another couple of yards. It'll be second and about two. Yeah, why another not? good job by Ellis. Yeah, why not? Just continue to go to that running game as they've been very effective, especially on first down, gaining at least five yards per carry. So making that second down, that third down, very manageable. So they'll head in at second and four. They take the football back another couple of yards as Comfort from the shotgun. Got two receivers in motion. He'll look to go to Ellis again, but this time they'll take him down behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, right there in that possession. The adjustment being made, a full house blitz. I mean, a jailbreak there as linebackers as long as with the linemen able to get behind the backfield there and blow that play up. They knew that run was going to come. Might want to mix it up here on this third down. Definitely a passing situation for Comfort. But Comfort's been very good in that passing game thus far. No type of pressure thus far for the Mariners. The Mariners, if they're going to be effective defensively, they got to get in the face of Dan Comfort and not allow him to have time and space to look downfield. Worth noting, if you're going to send blitzers, they have to be within the same line as your linemen. Is Comfort troubled there by Number 47, Mitch Osmond. That pass incomplete will go to fourth down. Yeah, a little miscommunication with the big boys up front and the running back in Aubrey Ellis as that was a three-man rush and they were able to bring pressure there. You can't have that when you have three guys rushing and you have four blockers. Those three guys have to be picked up and they have to be managed so that the quarterback can look downfield and pick up his receivers. Especially in that case where they needed six or seven. It's not just one or two you find a guy in the flat. You're looking a little bit higher up, and yeah. Comfort's got to be able to look there and not worry about the rushers coming the other way as LeBlanc will come out to kick this one to the other side here on fourth down. And he might want to keep it away from McMinns. He kicked it to his area. This ball will bounce out of bounds at around the 32. So that's a good directional kick, kicking, kicking away from McMinns who can take it to the house. So good possession there and pinning the Mariners back. Now they need to bring that same type of pressure that they had on the previous defensive possession, confusing Clark and forcing him to make turnovers and throwing that ball in the areas where the defenders are standing. Once again, more changes for the Mustangs. We talked about depth tall in particular in Wholesale. the lineman position. Wholesale changes up front. Colwell back in along with number 67, Sebastian Charette. Blake Alain, the lone Stand by up front. And, of course, Stevie Cormier, the pretty much permanent linebacker in that yeah. position. Yeah, you'll see Cormier switch from the defensive end to the linebacker position based on uh, based on what type of coverages they want to run and what type of coverages scheme they're going to play on down and distance and situations like that. McMinn's out of the backfield. He wants to run wide. A flag is down. McMinns would have enough for the first down. He's drug out of bounds by a pair of Mustangs. We'll see what the flag is. Yeah, that's going to come back. It looks like there was a hold on Stevie Cormier as McMinns was able to gain possession in a corner of that uh, particular run, and they're going to come back. It's going to be a 10-yard penalty. It's going to be first down and 20 
for the Mariners. That was an easy call on the edge as Cormier was able to try to fight off his blocker there. As you can see, take a look in the replays, we'll see if we can actually catch that on screen, but doesn't look like you can see at the corner there on the edge that Cormier got turned around, and that's where the infraction was, was called. So it'll be first and 20 for the Mariners. So once again, not a good start to their possession. Yeah, just under two minutes to go. I like that you didn't have to see the penalty. You just had to see McMim's reaction. You knew that that right. ball was coming the other way because he had the most disappointed look on his face. Yeah, you can usually tell. Guys can sense it, especially if they can see downfield with the vision. As you can see in the replay here, you can just see in the corner there as Cormier was turned around, but a good collision between McMim's Cormier and McIntyre as he was bringing him out of bounds. But it's very discouraging for a running back to see a gain a big game come back and make sure and then you have to reset and then you got to do it all over again so the Mariners up against it again but they need to respond here as the Mustangs are doing an outstanding job defensively on special teams as well as offense it's another case of being true to the football and taking care of the little things they're going to make the same play again McMinns he's got 20 yards in front of him he'll make a dodge across he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage but not much further, second down and about 10. Cormier once again in the open space able to track down McMinns as there was a good block on the edge for McMinns. He couldn't get as, as many yards as he did on the last carry, but he was able to gain some positive yardage and a manageable second down here for the Mariners. But you can see Cormier, he can go sideline to sideline. This guy's been playing football in this league. And you mentioned his accolades early in this first quarter that he can get it done. This guy can, is very athletic and he's very quick and he's and he's he's stout. He's not he's not a big guy. He's not tall. He's about five foot six but over two hundred pounds. But he's a bowling ball of a guy to try to block. If you can't get on your block and sustain your block on him, he will run you down sideline to sideline and gain some type of contact and break up your momentum. Yeah, Stevie Cormier listed at 5'8", 185, but he may as well be 7 feet, 300 pounds the way he runs right into you. Second down and nine. Hand off again to Minns. He'll go the right side this time. He might have enough room to get that first down. He's tied up. And that could be enough to make it for the first down here. It will be. So you see in the replay, Men's doing a good job once again. And once again, the two combatants there as Stevie Cormier in on the tackle. And that's got to be about his fifth tackle on the afternoon. Able to go sideline the sideline and make sure that Men's is being met there. But Men's with a good carry able to move the sticks for the Mariners. You can see that they're going to give the ball to Men's on every opportunity that they can. They're going to use him pretty much throughout the afternoon here if they're going to be successful offensively in the passing game and in the running game. As if Clark can't get the ball downfield to Mins, he's definitely going to look to run, but they're going to try to hand the ball off to Mins either in the slot back position, the running back position. So it's up to the Mustangs to find out where Mins is playing in that offensive backfield and try to key on him because it looks like every second possession, Mins is getting the football. Yeah, he's had the football in every play of this drive so far. Mins, uh, Mick Mins, excuse me, with the touchdown on the opening drive for I keep saying the Mariners. Mick Mins or Mins. I'm trying to <laughs> figure out if, it, if it's Mins or Mick Mins, but I'm pretty sure it was Mick Mins. But we had the public address announcer saying it's Mins. So we have a little bit of confusion. We'll <laughs> definitely we'll pick it up because we'll be saying it a lot more, especially in the absence of Ryan Dempsey as the clock is starting to tick down at 42 seconds. Clark, this time the... Slot back handoff, looking for 27. That being the GM, Richard Lush. Yeah, Lush getting his hips and shoulders upfield. Good block there on the edge by Mittmins as he was Richard able to Lush allow Lush to turn the corner. You can see there, contact, big boys, and boom. There's, once again, his number 15 with the tackle. And that's his sixth on the afternoon is Stevie Cormier. He's everywhere out there defensively. Number 15 getting it done, sideline to sideline. He looks like a, a mini Brian Erlacher right now. Yeah, a that's tackling machine. Lush the big oak tree. He just ran right into him. So we have a timeout on the field here. It's Cormier going over to talk. With the coaching staff, he'll make his way back out and decide how they're going to handle Dave Clark at second and seven. 
you got to think it's a passing down for the Mariners, but I mean, they've been playing some unconventional offense this afternoon where we've seen passing situations. They've ran the football, so but they've been successful, though, when they're able to legally block downfield and not hold and gain yardage that way, giving the ball to McMinns and Wellis Clark using his legs when the pocket breaks down in their passing game. So if you're the Mustangs right now, you got to think it's a down and they're down in distance. This is a passing situation, but you got to be ready for the run as well. Mariners will want to put something up on the scoreboard at the tail end of this first quarter. As it is 13-7 Mustangs. Mike Sanders and Vince Williams bringing you the call on Rogers TV. The Maritime Football League second and seven. Clark under center. Caught a guy going. A flag is down. He tried to toss it off to McMinns who will recover. But the flag will go against the defense. Yeah, it looks like they jumped offside or might be. It definitely wasn't a legal procedure, but it looked like the defense was a little bit early ahead of that snap count. You take a look here, and that was an easy call right up front there. The big man in the middle. Offside again. Yeah, it looked to be Sebastian Charette, the yeah. man in the middle, getting caught there. Yeah, Charette's got to do a better job of looking at the snap as he's standing over the football. So not a good opportunity, not a good play there by Charette, but uh, an opportunity here for the Mariners, a very manageable second down. So now they can do two things. They can either run the football or they can look for the home run ball here the to McMinns. The ball is just about on that center line. It's about... Two and two and a half. Clark will hand it off. This time going to Lush. Lush, can he do it? He reaches across to try to make it happen. Here at the end of this first quarter. It'll be brought back and it'll be third and inches to start this second quarter of play. Yeah, outstanding penetration defensively by DJ Carmichael meeting Lush in the backfield and not allowing him to gain that first down. Lush battled for that first down, tried to stretch the football out, but unable to get there. As an outstanding individual tackle in the open field by number four, DJ Carmichael, one of the veterans for the Mustangs. So that'll force a third along here. Third and two for the Mariners as Clark will settle in on this third down. Two yards at this game is very, very it's not very, usually in a conventional 12 man football. That's short yards, but two yards, it's almost uh, a long, uh, you know, a passing situation here because it's not a gimme. But when you got Dave Clark running, <laughs> <laughs> running the quarterback sneak with an open hole in between the the guard and the tackle, that's an easy <laughs> pickup. Yeah, David Clark uh, going right down Broadway, gaining about 12, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. 13-7 to seven for the Mustangs here in the opening 15 minutes. Yeah, it looked like the Mustangs were going to run away with this one in the first quarter as they were able to get a couple onside kicks and a turnover. But uh, you got to give the credit to the Mariners. As on those turnovers, they were able to come up with some good defensive stops and not allow the Mustangs to respond on those turnovers. Yeah, they were able to go punch for punch for a while. They combated the early score with a score of their own. Mustangs got another one in the next drive. And continuing with those onside kicks, both teams trying to make the onside kick work as it will be first and 10 from about the 45. So we're just about set to start the second quarter here. It is Maritime Football League. It is the Becca Bowl. Hashtag Becca told me to. You can see that there on your screen. Be sure to check out the hashtag as it is a awesome effort by the Moncton Mustangs today to honor Rebecca Schofield. All proceeds from gate admissions to be donated to Rebecca Schofield and her family in her tough time, time of need. And follow that hashtag Becca told me to. There's some very remarkable stuff on there from all around the world to be sure to check out as David Clark makes the call here for the Mariners as they'll settle in. It's been the Eugene McMinn show on offense for the Mariners for the most part in the first quarter. Yeah, it's going to continue here in the second for sure if they're going to be successful this afternoon. That is the Mariners. Lining up in the eye. It'll be tossed to McMinn's. Guess who? McMinn's trying to make a hole happen, and it does, and a big hit. And he's down and shaken up. So it looked to be 
a man coming across for the Mustangs trying to make that play happen. Yeah, and he's definitely down for the count here. Is just taking a breather. You gotta hope that he's gonna be okay. They're already sustaining a major injury at the running back position. You can see McMinn's looking for the corner here and, and coming late and whap boom right right there. A good tackle in the open field as, as he was wrapped up. Was clean. That's what you like to see. You wanna see clean football. You don't wanna see any cheap shots as Clark is giving it to the head official, Patrick Whit Fairweather, I'm not sure what he's complaining about, but on that particular replay, it definitely looked like McMinns was lit up legally. A very clean tackle. It is second and eight for the Mariners. Clark will settle in under center. He's got McMinns in the backfield and three men spread out. Make that four. One man in motion. Back to McMinns. McMinns now up through center. He's going to make his way through. He's hit hard there and taken to the ground. But another good gain for McMinns. Yeah, big tackle once again in the open field because it looked like McMinns was going to take it to the house as he was able to get into that defensive backfield and into the secondary. A great open field tackle there. As you can see in the replay here, good cut and good blocking up front. McMinns, the full head of steam and an outstanding tackle in space to bring him down and negate that opportunity to get downfield and pick up that first down. So it's going to be a grind here once again. Third down and short. Got to look to see if uh, Dave Clark's going to do that quarterback sneak. I would think that it was money on the last time they had, you know, third down and, and short yardage. Why not do it again? I got to think Dave Clark, the former running back, would want to call his own number on this one. Absolutely. We'll see lining up right under center. Two men in motion. No, he's going to hand it off. It's going to Lush from behind. Now the lateral back to Clark. Maybe a trick play. He makes his way up, but can he get back? I think it he looks got like a first. first down. An outstanding play. Heads up play by Lush. Great defensive stop and penetration by the Mustangs, but unlucky, but heads up play by Lush. You can see great penetration in the backfield by the Mustang defense. And then it's all Dave Clark after that as Lush with the heads up play and the lateral to Clark and Clark gets his shoulders and hips square to the line of scrimmage and dives for the first down so a little dipsy doodle and trickery there probably not part of the game plan but improvised by the Mariners as they're able to get that first down and sustain this drive. Sometimes you got to make the play happen when your GM looks behind him and he's in the tackle and tosses back to you says all right you go. Yeah absolutely. Clark tripped up from something and he Takes himself down or is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, great penetration by the front three for the Mustangs as they were able to keep Clark inside that pocket. Clark tried to step up, but he slipped. As you can see, the pocket breaking down as the defenders were able to get to him. Good job there by the big boys up front. It's the easiest sack for Brandon Colwell he's ever going to get. Yeah, it's probably going to be the <laughs> easiest on the afternoon for sure. Clark's a handful once he gets those feet moving and getting downfield. So good penetration by the front three there, Mike. It was not a lot of rain today, but field possibly a little bit moist depending on the footwear. As Clark will settle in in the shotgun. Here's second and 15. One man in motion. Clark now looks to his left. He'll toss it up. Nobody home. And it'll be third and long. Yeah, flag on the play. It looks like... Uh, Legal procedure, no end. The wide receiver on the far right side for the Mariners didn't get up on the line of scrimmage in time. But you can see the passing game and the running games all going through number seven as McMinns was the attended uh, target there by Dave Clark. It really has been the McMinns show, in particular in the absence of Ryan Dempsey, who was hurt on the second or third play on offense. And Dempsey now walking around on crutches, not able to come back into this game. So that's a huge loss for that Mariners offense as they try to, you know, have some type of balance and not lean heavily on number seven, McMinns. They've done a good job of kind of shielding the way McMinns can come out of the line of scrimmage, be it from behind in the backfield or a pass from the backfield or finding his way out for a big gain. That's how the touchdown happened. But after a while, you learn just zero in on seven, circle him on the playlist, and that's the only guy they're going to throw to. you got to make those, op those options open up in the case of Clark. Absolutely. Third and long. Clark in the shotgun. He's back. Will plant, throw it up high to nobody. Home again. And a long fourth down. Mustangs had a pair of players try to converge on that, but 
nothing doing. Yeah, they closed out a little bit late. McMinns was running free, but the delivery to McMinns was a little bit high by Clark. But you can see once again, dropping back, McMinns playing the far wide receiver there, trying to go one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back. Gained some separation, but Clark with the errant throw, unable to hook up, but he was open. So you can see, as you mentioned, just before the snap of that football, number seven's got to be penciled. He's got to be circled. That That's the guy that they're going to go to in probably every snap of the football. He's got to be the first key and the first read defensively, but you can't get caught looking at McMinns because then other guys can hurt you. Dave Clark can hurt you within the running game, running out of the pocket, or they can sneak that play action, well, excuse me, that sleeper play, kind of like a, a draw play to Lush, and he can try to hurt you up upfield in the middle of the field on that uh, that carry. That's what you got to look for. you got to think not only is McMinns the option, but McMinns the option that Clark's looking at as well in the first option is the quick punt from Lush makes its way out of bounds. Mustangs will be in deep in their own territory. They'll get possession around the 23. You got another penalty on the play here. Legal procedure no end on the kicking team and it looks like the Mustangs will wave that off and gain possession here. They don't want another re-kick in case there's more trickery being displayed by the Mariners as it looked like they had a couple players on side on that punt. That penalty is declined. So it will be Dan Comfort to settle back in. He's got quite a lot of field to gain. And it's been a quite a long time since this Mustang offense been on the field. That's so for sure. A lot of time for the Mustang offense to rest up and regroup. Let's see what type of offense they come up with in, 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 within this possession. Quick toss to Ellis. Ellis chopped up and sent to the field. Yeah, that's a good gain on first down. Good seal block by number 11, Matt Rose as Ellis was able to square those shoulders and get downhill. As you can see in that replay, Rose able to gain that corner and Ellis picking up that yardage. But good open field tackle by the Mariners. Great field reads from Ellis to find that hole and make those two or three yard gains turn into six and seven. Second and six, a flag is down. Comfort faked the handoff. He goes up high. He's looking for White, but a little too far for him. We'll see how the flag shakes down. Yeah. Good play action there. and look might have been a legal defense as there looked like there was a blitz outside the tackle box, and it looks like exactly what it is, a legal defense as that rush and pressure came on Comfort as he wanted to throw that. He just had a half a second. If he would have had a half a second, to throw that football downfield. He might have hooked up with White as White was able to gain some separation on that corner route. Definitely a five-yard penalty illegal legal defense on the Mariners as they brought that pressure. Comfort unable to hook up with White downfield. So mistakes starting to pile up and the penalty starting to pile up for the Mariners, but you can't have that, Mike, on the road if you're in a dogfight, especially in a close ball game. Yeah, and that one, a black and white play is not having blitzers in the box. The pass goes up high, and that one intended for Chris Brown. Couldn't find the target. Yeah, Brown was wide open from that slot back position. Comfort just a little bit too much air on that football. But if he can get that football down on an even plane, lots of time to throw it. You can see the separation between him and the defensive backs. And unable to come up with that pass, but... He's getting a lot of time to look downfield, that is, for Dan Comfort. He's just got to continue to be consistent and make sure that his throws are a little bit more crisp. This time he'll wait for Ellis. Ellis will make his way for the first down and a little bit more. Mustangs offense will continue with a great job by number 34. But that's what sets up when you have those type of penalties. That's what you can do within your offense. You can have that type of imagination. They knew it was going to be a short down in situation in that third down. In that second down, they were able to take a shot downfield, but they knew that it had a very manageable third down. And with this running game, Ellis has yet to have been stopped in the backfield, so why not take a shot downfield and see what you can get? It's been the big difference in offense as Rose will take the hand from the slot back position. He's got some daylight too. It's a first and more. He's taken down and around the 50. Yeah, it looks like that's going to come back. It looked like there might have been a hold on the edge and it looked like before yards were gained. If, if I'm correct here, definitely going to be sec first down and 20 for the Mustangs as 
The only way that Rose was able to gain that edge was definitely on the wide receiver holding. You take a look in the replay here. It's Rose able to get downfield, and it looks like when he turns that corner, you can see it on number 87, turn his man around. You can't do that in the blocking game, especially when he gains that edge. You just got to stand in front of him and make that man go around you. You got you once you you have that edge, and once you have that possession position when you're in front of him, you just got to stand there and make that guy take the long way around to try to gain that tackle, especially when the ball carrier has passed you. So not a good block on the edge there. Chris Brown caught. All you can do is. Just stand there and make yourself a statue, make yourself in the way. Exactly. Caught by Rose in the flat. He's taken down there. But about an eight yard gain by Rose. Well, that's, that's a second down. That's a good play out of, you know, out of a uh, first down and long. You gain eight yards, a quick play. You get comfort, you know, the, the ability to get the ball out of his hands quickly. And, and finally, you'll hit somebody in that passing game. And that gains confidence for him as a quarterback and also gains confidence for the receiver and the rest of the receivers on the team that they're not, you know, caught in a situation where they're holding. So a positive gain on first down for the Mustangs. Comfort in terms of the passing game has had a relatively comfortable play except this one here but it is caught by Brown in midfield and he'll be taken down there but a nice job to grab about five or six again for the Mustangs. That's a huge adjustment there by Brown and a heads up play by Comfort as he had a lot of pressure in his face as the blocking broke down in the front three and the pressure came quickly and Comfort did an outstanding job avoiding the tackle and making that throw off the back foot. So great athletic athletic play there by Comfort and great adjustment by Brown making that catch in traffic. Third and about seven. Comfort, one step and makes a nice throw and that's caught on the right side for a nice gain by Adam Shea getting into the game. Now you're starting to see Dan Comfort starting to deal now. Now he's found his stride and his rhythm here in this possession. Beautiful pass and catch here lots of time easy catch and throw beautiful delivery good catch by Shea getting up there and using his hands to catch the football to secure the football and able to get some yards after the catch so that was a beautiful pitch and catch there between Comfort and Shea see that's what you need you got to have that rhythm and that's what Comfort's about it's about rhythm getting the time and space and able to look downfield with a clear sight line and pick up his man in the open field on the previous play he had lots of traffic in front of him he did an outstanding job of to avoid the tackle and find the man in the middle of the field so comfort starting to you know get his game going in that passing game and look out if they can get that done the passing game along with the running game and the running game has been very stout this afternoon they're going to start to pile some points up on the mariners yeah perfect play by comfort on that last one the one step plant and throw and he's now back in the shotgun three in motion. He'll hand off quick, but they caught to him quick. The play action. Comfort handles it himself. A flag is down. Comfort gains about two. Looks like it's offside on the defense. The Mariners jumping on that left-hand side, and it might have been the defensive end. Let's take a look here. Definitely the defensive end, number 56, getting the jump, and he's been a menace on this possession for the Mariners as Jasper Thompson getting off the ball a little bit too quick and you, you got to cringe if you're a defensive coordinator or a head coach when you see that defensive line jumps jump offside they're closest to the football they got to be lined up on the football one yard and they got to watch the movement of the football there's no excuse for a defensive lineman to be offside so first and five, Comfort will settle back there. The rush is coming. He's taken down with a big catch, almost there, in the hands and out of Mullally. He's got to come up with that. That was a beautiful delivery by Comfort, and it looked like it be, looks like it might be unnecessary roughness. Late hit on the quarterback as Comfort's slow to get up, but a beautiful play and great courageous uh, play there by Comfort. He stands in and delivers a beautiful football downfield. But Malawi's got to come up with that. He's got to beat that defender. And it was 
delivered in a position where only Mullally was able to make that catch, but he's got to make that play. Yeah, it was an elite level throw from comfort, even under pressure, and Mullally did everything right but come up with the football. He was in the perfect position to get it. Hands were up. It went in and out. Yeah, you got to help your quarterback out in that particular situation. You got to help yourself out in that particular situation as well. You got to be able to, you did a good job of getting away from your defender. You had a good pattern. You had time and space, but you got to make that play. You got to complete that play with that catch. The flag nullified on the play. It'll be second and five. Malali, the 18 year old Nigerian, played with Harrison Trimble this year. High school football. It's been a great feature for the Mustangs in their offense as they'll go back out with comfort in the shotgun. Second and five, three in motion. He'll toss it off to Ellis. Ellis will break three from one tackle. He'll go all the way to the first down or very, very close. That was a beautiful cut there, a cut back with the left foot planted in the ground as he was able to avoid that tackle in the backfield by Ellis and gain yardage. And it looks like if we take a look at a replay here, as he gets the pitch and right there, whoop, he's, see you later. Right 47 coming up field, trying to make that open field tackle. And Ellis says, no way, buddy, I'm going to get by you here with that one foot in the ground and able to get his hips and shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage and pick up that first down. But it looks okay, like it's going to be pretty close. We might have a measurement. Chains are going to come out from the sidelines here. As, yeah, Ellis just saying, excuse me, I'm going to yeah. make my way around. That was an excellent dodge. Beautiful cut by Ellis and that's what he is he's a one uh, one cut back and he likes to not play around and get downfield he's not going to play around in the backfield and give you multiple cuts he's going to give you one move and he's going to get upfield and get downhill but it looks like this one is a little bit short here Mike from my vantage point if I'm going to guess on this measurement I'm going to say it's going to be a little bit short for the Mustangs I think you might be right, and from the looks of things, yeah, it's short by about five or six inches, so we'll have third down and very, very close at the 39. It'll be third down for the Mustangs. But an opportunity right now, and the Mustangs can take a shot downfield in this situation. They know they got a very manageable fourth down coming up if they don't gain their first down, so they can take a shot downfield. So if you're the Mariners, you gotta be, you got to have heads up here and be aware that not only can they run the football, they can also pass the football. So look for the Mustangs offense to open it up here and take a shot downfield. Coach Williams saying bite off as much as you can chew as Comfort will stand back in the shotgun position, two in motion. Third and very short. He'll plant and throw it up high, looking for that. Malali nearly picked off. But you can't throw it in the double coverage. That's for sure. And a that quick a gamble the there, and they got down. away with it. As outstanding coverage as the free safety was able to break it up. But there was some separation there from Malawi as the pressure coming late on Comfort. But that's the type of throw that you can't have in this situation. Beautiful extension, a battle for the football. Just couldn't come up with it. Great stop here, but an opportunity missed. Gone by the wayside without that catch for the Mariners. So now they have fourth and short. So you got to think that quarterback sneak's got to be coming, or at least a handoff or a dive to Aubrey Ellis. Yeah, it's a fourth and about a fall over. So we'll see what the call is. Yeah, the big boy's got to be good right now on this this play for the Mustangs. This is where the O-line makes their money. They've got four or five blockers. Comfort nearly lost it, but he's able to pick it back up and make his way across for the first down. Oh, and he got a bad spot there by the head man, and it looked like he didn't give him forward progress. As on that fumble, it looked like they're marking him behind, and he didn't pick it up. So that exchange between the quarterback and center, not good. And Comfort thinks he's got the first down. Let's take a look at the replay here. It's a bad snap. And that is a good call because you can see in the replay, Comfort's right knee was down when he gained possession off of that bad snap. So a good call by the head official, the referee on the afternoon, Patrick Fairweather. You can roll it back and you can see it multiple times. Fans at home not happy that the Mustangs didn't get the first down and think that he should have. But you can see in the replay here, that right knee is on the ground when he gains possession after that botched snap. So a good call 
by the official on the field and a big play for that Mariner defense. And a great grab by our guys in the truck there. Excellent job here on Rogers TV covering the Maritime Football League. Mike Sanderson, Vince Williams here giving you the call. It's about 4.19 to go here in the second quarter. So that drive snuffed out, Mike, by multiple mistakes and decisions. Their missed opportunity, Comfort looked like he had things going offensively with the passing game. Took a chance on third and short and then unable to secure that snap on fourth and short. It's Clark didn't like what he saw. He'll take for a break for a run and tackled there at about two yards in by Cain Augustine. Yeah, good play there by Augustine wrapping up Clark. Yeah, Clark, Clark would have been able to get into the open field in that defensive backfield. Who knows what was going to happen. But a good stop there, but he almost got that one out as well with the loose with that loose off arm. Some good coverage there by the front three as Colwell there as well was just behind Augustine, could have jumped up and grabbed him, but Clark very shifty. Had about three yards to go. He could just throw a move and come back in the middle. And both sides on, both defensive front three have been pl have played very well this afternoon for the Mariners as well as the Mustangs. They've shown flashes that they can get in the defense offensive backfield and disrupt the offensive flow. Mustangs rushed four and Clark's in trouble. He'll shrug off a tackle. He's got some room, wants to throw. Instead, he'll put the shoulder down and he's tackled hard just on that left side. Look to be coming across number 61. Daniel Siliker. Yeah, it looked like uh, Clark was going to get the edge there and gain some some great Daniel possession downfield down after that play. It's a broken play as he was able to get flushed out of that backfield. But a huge play by Augustine in the open field as he tried to take Clark's head off there. <laughs> it's a huge play, and you got to be you got to have a sigh of relief if you're the you're the offensive coordinator and the head coach of the Mariners, you definitely can't see your best player in Dave Clark go down this afternoon. And I'm not sure who the backup is, but he's probably not as as efficient and effective as Dave Clark. Yeah, that's the play. If you're a defensive coordinator, you're really happy with the aggressiveness, but certainly on the case of the Mariners, you gasp a little bit as McMims, no surprise, there carries his way through, dodges the tackle. He's got the first down. He might have a bit more as he's finally drugged down around the 45. Yeah, outstanding play in open space, avoiding that tackle. But McMinn's beautiful vision as he turns the corner. Look at Clark in the open field. Whoop! He hits a block on Steve Cormier, and that seals the deal for the first down at least. And then he breaks a tackle in the open field, able to avoid that tackle. But would you, when you come up from that distance, you got to make sure that you wrap the big man McMinn's as he will shed a block and he will shed a tackle, excuse me, in the open field. And he did an outstanding job on that particular run. But you got to give credit to Dave Clark, the quarterback, going downfield and taking on Stevie Cormier, the linebacker, on that play. And a great block as well from Clark showing his athleticism. Now the toss back to McMinns. Again, that right side. And a nice again, block another again. block. But Stevie Cormier this time able to bring down McMinns in the open field. The great read by Cormier, recognizing he was the first one blocked by Clark, and now this time he's going to get behind the first block and be able to come in on McMinns. It's a nice job by Cormier there. McMinns will make his way back slowly to the huddle. Second and about six. So McMinn's in the backfield. You gotta think he's gotta get the the football, or he's a decoy on this one. Two in motion. He is the decoy. Clark will take it himself. Clark around a couple of players. He's got some daylight. He'll make his way through to the house. Touchdown, Mariners! Not a good defensive play there by Augustine as he got sucked in on the corner there. If you're the, a defensive end. You got to make sure that you secure that end. As we take a look at the replay here, as he was able to just walk around Augustine, and when Clark gets into the open field, he can make men miss, and he looked like he made Cormier miss as well, and he's off to the races and an easy run for Dave Clark. But it all starts up front as Augustine took that gamble, took that inside shade, and didn't take the outside shade, making sure that he protect the corner. And he took that gamble, and Dave Clark made him pay for it. 
So a defensive breakdown individually, but an outstanding offensive call by the Mariners there as they use McMinns as a decoy as he went left and then Clark went right. Yep, you put the nail right on the head and a great block by Richard Lush in the front end following Clark on that right side. He made a nice block on Cormier and that really opened up a hole for Clark to make his way through to the house. So we'll have the point after attempt here. As you can see on the sideline, head coach Jason Terrace not happy hands on the hips as he is staring down his defensive <laughs> team right now. Um, he's probably going to have a quick word with his linebackers uh, along with his front three. As you can see I mean, on that particular replay, Augustine giving up that corner and not you know, sealing that edge and giving Clark that opportunity in the open field to make tacklers miss. 18-year-old Augustine, as we mentioned, will play with the Huskies next year. As the point after is good, the Mariners will take the lead. The kick is good. That brings the score to the Minute and 27 to go here as the Mustangs in unfamiliar territory. They are trailing by one point for the second time today. First time they scored on the next drive. Well, I tell you what, if you're walking late into the ballpark here and trying to pick up this game and you're looking on the sideline between these two teams and you're looking at the Mustang sideline, you see all those guys available ready to play and then you scan over to your left and you look at the Mariners sideline, you see that depleted lineup. You got guys over there not playing, you got guys over there that are injured, but then the play on the field has been outstanding. In the early going of this game, you would think that the Mustangs were going to blow this one open with multiple turnovers and opportunities in the kicking game to get the ball back in great field position but not able to do anything with it. So when you don't do that and you give a road team an opportunity to hang around and you give them opportunities with penalties and missed tackles and missed assignments defensively, that's when the that's when the opposition gains confidence and they think that they can win this football game. If right now the Mariners think that they that they can win this football game based on the strength of two guys, McMinns and Clark. That's been the two focuses for the Mariners as this one will be booted far for the first time out of all the kickoffs we've had. And Rose will grab it. He'll look to He's break. Got He's space. got a blocker. But a nice job to shed the blocker by Neil Cunningham to come back and make the tackle or else he would have been out for a long time. Well, I tell you what, Cunningham, if he doesn't make that play in the open field, Rose is gone and he's taking this one to the house. Rose coming up in the up back position. Good cut, able to shed that tackler, but a good open tackle there by Cunningham. Sacrificing his body and making sure that Rose doesn't go off to the races because he had a lot of green in front of him if, it w if he was able to, to break that tackle by Cunningham. There's a great read by Cunningham to shed the blocker. Comfort first down. He'll air it up high looking for White, but he cannot find the connection. White arguing maybe he was yeah. holed up a little bit. He's got to continue to run downfield and make a play on the football. It's going to be a fight between him and the defensive backs on the afternoon here. He's got to know that it's going to be a dogfight going downfield, but he's got to do a better job of just focusing on the football and not looking for that pass interference call. Great coverage by Cody Sock on that one. It'll be second down and 10. Comfort again, able to settle down and get a good throw out. Yeah, definitely a good football, a good throw by Comfort in rhythm. Again in the shotgun. He's got Rose in motion. Now he'll look to his left. He'll find White, but cannot make the oh catch. And what a grab. Goodness, here we <laughs> go. Super Bowl S right there. <laughs> Outstanding. That's definitely luck on that play. But you know what? He was good, as you can see in this replay here. Good, easy pitch and catch. He's got to come up with that. White has to come up with that throw. As he's unable to make that catch, good collision between him and the defensive back and an outstanding concentration on the carom and making that catch, but it went right into his hands. There's no way he could drop it. But White's got to come up with that football. That's Cam Welsh. Cam Walsh, excuse me, with the grab on the coverage. That was just a look what I found, but he had White covered pretty well. Yeah, bang, bang play, but White's got to come up with that catch. He bobbled it twice. You got to know that you know, on those quick 
hitters, especially within 5 to 10 yards, if it's a hitch or a quick screen or a, a post pattern, the ball's coming out quickly. You've got to get your hands ready, secure the football, and take the contact. 113 to play here in this first half as Clark will grab it. And he'll make a run for it on the left side. We'll tuck on down. Wanted to throw. Now a spin move. And he's taken down by a pair of Mustangs. Perhaps a loss on that one. Yeah, look again. Mini Erlacher in the open field. Steve Cormier running sideline to sideline once again. Tracking down Clark. Steve Clark in the carry. Loss of a yard in the play. And that's a sack by Cormier. So Clark trying to make a play with his legs. Had an opportunity to look downfield and make the throw. But a good play there by Carmichael and Cormier. The two veterans coming up with that loss. Keeley comes in with the help to get the half sack. And Cormier will now get the full sack with the one half sack he got in the first quarter. It'll be second and 11. Clark will settle in under center. He's got a man in the back. He'll pitch it back to McMinns. No surprise there coming out the right side. He finds a hole. He might get the first. Yes, he will. Sheds a block. Still there just past the first down marker and seven or eight guys getting their own shots in on him. Man, I tell you, this Eugene McMinns is something else. He is a great athlete in the open field. He's just making guys miss right now. This Mustang defense is reeling because they can't make a play individually they need multiple guys to bring down McMinns and McMinns on that play was able to make his a play with his legs and great vision with with the football let's take a look at you can see here the edge sealed by a good block Cormier unable to make that play in the open field McMinns showing a lot of strength able to shade off that defensive lineman's defensive uh, lineman's uh, tackle and he's able to fight for more yards picking up the first down so it takes three to four guys to bring down McMinns you're not going to bring this guy down unless the tackle is exceptionally well in the open field and he's done an outstanding job of breaking tackles all afternoon long but you got to think coming into this game if you're McMinns you're not thinking you're going to be the featured guy when it comes to the running game you know you have a good running back in Dempsey and you know that you have some sort of balance and you got a great quarterback in Clark where he's able to run with the football and make plays with his legs. You're not coming into this ball game thinking that you're going to be the featured guy in the running game and the passing game. You know you're going to get your touches when it comes to the passing game, but now you're thrust into this position where you've got to be the guy in the running game and the passing game, and he's done an outstanding job this afternoon. So major adjustments have to be made in the second half for the Mustang defense if they're going to try to contain number seven of the Mariners. Yeah, and it's clear that there's nobody more looking forward to the orange slices at halftime than McMinns in the huddle was there down to one knee. He's going to get the carry again now to the left. McMinns again cuts to the left. He's tigled up by another couple, and you can circle him in the playbook all you want, but if you need two or three guys to take him down, they all have to be aware of it. Yeah, you definitely have to, you definitely have, to have good game tackling by the Mustangs and that was a good tackle but after he gained three more yards but he's going to be a tough customer in that second half you got to hope that maybe the first half has slowed him down but he is showing no signs of slowing down as he lines up at the wide out position now on the right side he's the furthest right option he's out in the flat Clark will shake him off and go the left and that throw a little too low for the intended receiver was looking for a Mariner that looks to be number 47 Mitch Osmond and he didn't even move on that particular play that is McMinns as he just lined out to the right side and looked like it was just basically a decoy but it's interesting to see that the free safety number four DJ Carmichael looks like he's playing a little bit of spy game here and play a little one-on-one -on -one option you think that they not they need to try the bracket McMinns in the passing game especially when he lines up at that wide open position but when he's a running back those linebackers in front three got to be aware where he is and they got to flow within their lanes and not get too wide and open up those lanes because once he makes that one cut he's able to get downfield two in motion for Clark here on third down Clark will roll to his right he'll shed one tackle he'll shed Carmichael but he does get a touch on him could that be enough for the first Good fight downfield, and it is enough. Great effort individually there by Dave Clark. But once again, Clark able to make plays with his legs. you got to think that if you're the Mustangs 
He's not dropping back to pass the football. He's dropping back to run around and make plays with his legs. Clark now with a fresh set of downs to work with. He'll peel to his right and get the throw up looking for Wagara. No, no dice there on that one. He's covered well. Yeah, no disrespect to Dave Clark. As you can see in that delivery, it's not as smooth as Dan Comfort, a natural quarterback, drop back passer. Comfort a little bit more polished, I would say, as a passer than Dave Clark. Clark has been very steady and very good running the football, but on the afternoon when it comes to delivering the football in the passing game, it's been very rough. 4.8 to play in this first half. Mariners would like to add some more points to the board before we go in for half time and, and they I'm, draw it up in the huddle here. And I'm not sure, Mike, if, if Clark has actually completed a pass on the afternoon. If we take a look at the stats, I don't think he's completed a single pass. He attempted several passes, but I'm not sure if he actually hit, oh, excuse me, he had a touchdown pass to McMinns in that first quarter. That was so he, it was very just the early, one. Very early in the first quarter. Now the ball's in the ground, recovered by the Mustangs. And a flag on the play, and no time left on the clock. A missed opportunity, but an outstanding defensive stop by the Mustangs as they were able to keep Clark in the pocket and force that fumble. But I'm not sure why they didn't punt this or even attempt the field goal for the Mariners to try to put some points on the board. Let's take a look. Good pressure up front and a good play there to knock that ball loose. A great strip by Colwell and a great recovery by Elaine. Colwell with the pressure. Augustine also with the pressure on the edge, forcing Clark up inside that pocket. So a good response at the end of that second quarter by the Mustang defense. That'll do it for the first half. So for the Mariners, a bit of a missed opportunity at the end here as Clark puts the ball to the ground. But it is 14-13. Mariners carry a lead here. So that is one thing that they haven't had yet has been a lead. And they've been able to make their way with a one-point lead. As uh, Vince, what do you think? When you're talking PEI, you're talking Moncton. What has really been the key here? Well, I tell you, it's been a few different players. It's been individual play of, of three guys. Dan Comfort and uh, for the Mustangs offensively, his ability to get the ball downfield and able to distribute the, bat, the, bat, the football to several guys in that passing game. But on the Mariners' side, you got to look to sustain and and shut down in the second half. Dave Clark, the ability to run from the quarterback position, and McMims from any position offensively as a running back and as a wide receiver and a slot back. So major adjustments for both sides in a close football game. 14-13 the score, Mariners and Mustangs. We'll have Vince who caught up with both coaches. Coming up after the break, it is MFL on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Rocking Stone Field in Moncton, New Brunswick. I'm at the half with the head coach of the Moncton Mustangs, Coach T Jason Terrace. Terrace, um, talk about a te the team and the preparation this week and coming into this game, pe playing the PEI Mariners, and how was your preparation for your team in preparing for them? Well, we knew going in uh, that uh, we had a tough game against them last year. The last game of the regular season was the barn burn. It was 55-51 and uh, penalties were abounding too. And so uh, we knew that uh, we weren't going into an easy game despite them losing the first two games of their season. So um, we, uh, we want to stay disciplined. Uh, we don't want to take any penalties. And uh, we know that they can burn us uh, offensively. So uh, we're going to try to keep things fundamentally sound uh, defensively and uh, ho hopefully we can contain them. In coming into this season, you guys had a pretty good season last year, and you mentioned that game against the Mariners last season where it came down to the very last play to decide who was going to the playoffs. Coming into the season, you have a very veteran-laden team. Um, what is the emphasis and what is the role of your, uh, your key players into this season? How are you looking to them to be successful? Um, I, I think that uh, we do have a, a mix of of fantastic veterans, uh, some real superstars. 
uh, but we also have some young guys that we're trying to continue to develop too and so um, we just continue to work on fundamentals um, and in this league I find that if uh, you can just play a sound fundamental game uh, it'll get you miles ahead so um, in practice uh, we're, we're continuing to work on um, just tackling and blocking and uh, and basic systems but uh, those those guys the the veteran guys have done an incredible job uh, with uh, mentoring and putting those younger guys under their wings and and uh, we saw what what we could do you know last uh, last week against Nova Scotia and uh, those those veteran guys played a key part in that and and so also did the young guys um, so we're we're excited to have who we have and uh, we just continue to try to develop too. And lastly but not least, you come from a tradition with the Mustangs of winning championships. In the last few years, the St. John Wanderers have been very good winning championships. They've been very good not being able to be defeated. What has to be done for your team going to that next level to beat a team such as St. John? St. John right now is a class of the league, and I, I hate to say that. In our history, we've uh, had uh, quite a bit of uh, animosity between the, both teams. But uh, this year, we're, we're continuing to focus, like I said, on, on, on development and uh, putting the key guys in the right places to, to make the right plays. And uh, you know, St. John doesn't play uh, a very complicated game, but they are tremendous athletes all every every one of them on the field they are uh, intense and they're big and they're strong and they're fast and so we just got to uh, to play a smart game against those guys um, and uh, hopefully we can put them away this year finally thanks for this coach good luck the rest of the way and thanks Danny <laughs> stay with us you're watching Mustang football on Rogers TV Welcome back to Maritime Football League action on Rogers TV. Mike Sanderson, Vince Williams bringing you what has been turning into a very tight affair. 14-13 to 13 Mariners and Mustangs. And Vince, it's been you, the Eugene McMinn show on the side of the Mariners for sure as uh, Dempsey fell in the second or third play from scrimmage for the Mariner offense, but it really hasn't shook him at all. No, not at all. And like we mentioned in that second quarter, McMinn's coming into this game as the feature wide receiver, slot back. Now he's the feature everything offensively. Slot back, wide out, running back, you name it. Returner, the guy is getting it done, and this is the reason why they have a one-point lead. But if you're the Mustangs, you got to make some major adjustments defensively. You got to know where he is, and you got to make sure that you contain the quarterback. Dave Clark has done an outstanding job of making plays using his legs. He hasn't gotten the job done throwing the football, only completing one pass, and that one pass was basically a jump ball in the back of the end zone to who? Number seven, Eugene McMinn. So if you're a defense, if you're the Mustang defense, you make those adjustments, you try to control those guys or contain those two guys, and then offensively take care of the football, sustain some long drives and put points on the board, you're going to be good in the second half. But you need to do those things. If those things do not happen in the second half, if they do not materialize, Mike, they're going to go down to the defeat, and the Mariners are going to get out of here with their first win on the season. Yeah, Mustangs struggled a little bit after getting points on their first two drives of the game. It was a uh, running touchdown to Ellis, and then a nice uh, pass with the about a 10-yard pass to Dickinson who found his way into the end zone on the left side for the second drive of the game to make it 13-7. Uh, but after that, the Mustangs' offense sputtered a little bit, but uh, not necessarily from the fault of Dan Comfort, who's been able to put those throws in the air. The wide receiver just haven't been able to bring it down. Yeah, the wide receiver's not doing a good job of using their hands to catch the football. Man, they've done an outstanding job of gaining separation between them and their defensive backs, but they're not a doing a good job of completing the catch. I had a couple opportunities downfield, deep downfield to uh, number 13, 
that was White. White had an opportunity twice to come up with the football, fumbled it in the air, and then they turned it over on the interception. And then on another opportunity downfield, Mulally had an opportunity to make a play deep downfield, and he was unable to come up with the catch. If you're wide receivers, if you do the job of gaining separation and run great patterns, you got to reward yourself in garnering that football and fighting for that football and coming up with possession of the football, especially if the quarterback has time and space and delivers a great ball. And Dan Comfort has been delivering great footballs this afternoon at that quarterback position. Yeah, Comfort hasn't seemed to have had too much trouble in terms of unloading the football, but he's got these two rookies to throw at him, Malali and White, who are both rookies to the league. And sometimes when that happens, you're looking at only yes. your third chance in, in terms of games, in terms of game action, where... Right. The points count, and in the case of Mulally, only 18 years old, White 24 from Ottawa. You're looking at guys who aren't necessarily used to the to the competition, to the coverage yet, maybe looking a little too far ahead, saying, I'm going to make the catch, and I'm going to go with it, right. but you got to make that catch first. But with the conversation at halftime with the head coach, Jason Terrace, he's relying on these rookies. He knows he has some stout veterans, but he also knows he has some explosive rookies that can make plays. Now it's time for those rookies to step up and make those plays. This second half, I would think that those rookies are going to get their opportunity again to make plays. And if I'm in that locker room for the Mustangs, and I know Jason Terrace because I lined up against this guy, and I saw this guy try to chase me down on multiple times throughout my uh, MFL career, I know he read that defense and offense, the riot act, and made sure that these guys right the ship in the second half. Yeah, and you're talking about veterans making big plays. Dickinson, a 12th year guy, you know, made a great grab early in the first quarter. Mustangs haven't been back to the promised land since then, but they're looking to have an impact here in this uh, start of the second half as we'll get underway here in this third quarter in just a minute. Yeah, Mike, they're going to have to look to go back to the running game. Aubrey Ellis has been very good on the afternoon, running the football, gaining yards, getting the shoulder square upfield, getting that one cut and getting downfield and getting positive yardage. you got to think that the offense is going to set up through Ellis's ability to get downfield and gain yards and make some manageable second down and third chance opportunities. But there was a time in that second quarter where they had it third and short and they took a shot downfield, almost came up with an interception. Then on that fourth down, that botch snap, that exchange between the center and the quarterback, Dan Comfort, wasn't clean and they ended up giving up the football and turning it over on downs as Comfort had his knee down before he gained yards forward to gain that first down. They cannot have those situations, especially when they are in the Mariners' end and pressing for points and attacking them. They can't let the Mariners get off the hook here and not put points off the board, put points on the board. They gotta be able to finish drives. This second half, it's gotta be about finishing drives and shutting down the Mariners offense. Yeah, Mustangs had a lot of control early in that first quarter. It was led through Ellis and led through short passes. And the moment that Comfort tried to put the ball way up in the air, he was able to do it, but nobody could really bring it down. They kinda got away from that running right. game a little bit, in particular in the tail end of the second quarter. Can't force it. Can't no. force it, and that's the thing. When he's not forcing the football in the tight situations and he's, throwing, he's showing some rhythm and the big boys up front are giving him time to see clear pass down the passing uh, down, the, down the field and he has those lanes that are opening up and he can throw it into those wide open lanes, he's been very good. But when he's forced the ball down the middle of the field and try to make a big play with his inexperienced slot backs, that's when he runs into trouble. So if he can just throw on time and throw with tempo and get the ball out quick and get it into those open spaces in the slots, no, sorry, in right in the areas where there's open pockets, then they can be good. But they got to go back to that running game. They got to rely heavily on Aubrey Ellis to carry the mail in the second half. And they got to set the tone early in this third quarter and show the Mariners that it's going to be that type of football game throughout this third and fourth quarter. In the case of the Mariners, it really has been tale of two players and Dave Clark and Eugene McMims. And how how do the Mustangs cover those two dynamic offensive players? Well, you got to be aware. You got to be. You have to have your front three and your linebackers know where these guys are. You got to play disciplined football. You got to know that these guys are going to beat you on the cutback. So if they're going to beat you on, try to beat you on the cutback, you got to be responsible playing in your lanes and don't overplay on that touchdown run 
by Clark. There was an overplay on the defensive end where Augustine made a move and a decision to come inside instead of protecting the outside. And on a good fake, using McBims as a decoy on the wide, uh, sorry, on the running back sweep, sweep on the left side, he was able to get around the corner. And then when he gets in the open field, as you know, he turns from quarterback to running back, a natural running back, an all star throughout his career playing for PEI, used to be the PEI privateers as we mentioned, now the Mariners. He's been an all-star every single year as a running back, so he knows how to get it done in the open field. He has outstanding vision, and he turns into that running back mode, and that's where the lights turn on for him. He's going to make guys miss in the open field, because if he gets that ability to get into that defensive secondary as the linebacking core, as you can see in that, that first half, He's going to make them pay, but they need to play discipline and they got to stay in their lanes and make sure that they gain tackle these two guys. Certainly changes need to be made in the case of both head coach Jason Terrace and head coach Zach Davidson as we're just about set for the kick here from Colin Trewin to start this second half. Don't forget this is the Becca Bowl. Check out hashtag Becca told me to. All the game proceeds going to Rebecca Schofield and her family and that's kick right to Good Emilali, and he'll break his way off. He's got a couple of blockers, but he's tripped up around midfield, but some great field position for the Mustangs to work with. And that's a good play by Mimali, and that gives him some confidence that should carry over into the offense as that was a very yeah, long yeah, kick, and it looked like the result of the end of that second down, quarter, the there were multiple penalties called on the Mariners, and the reason why they weren't kicking from the standard 45 yard line and it looked like they were kicking from the 35 so an opportunity here early for the Mustangs to pick up some points on the board now they need to move the football and they need a good drive in this first drive here in the third quarter it's been an excellent job by the O-line to settle Comfort back in his pocket he's going to go to Ellis and Ellis going to put the shoulder down break his way in for a first down early here in this second half and that's the way you do it set the tone with the running game and Ellis has been very strong and very good on the afternoon this Mariner defense has no answer for the running game for the Mustangs they got to stay with the running game. They cannot give up on the running game because Alice is doing an outstanding job. He's just going north and south. This guy's not playing around. He's not dancing into the backfield. He's getting square to the line of scrimmage and gaining positive yards on first down. Yeah, and that first down again, it's a handoff and a gain of about five or so in the hands of Tyler McHugh in the tight end coming into the backfield and grabbing yeah, that one through. Yeah, why not? Why not give it to the big boy up front there? He opened the hole on the first handoff, and on this play right here, you got to think the Mariners were probably going to think that uh, the, the ball is going to go back to Ellis, but a great play call by the offensive coordinator of the Mustangs, giving it to the big tight end slash fullback, and he gains a good yard here and a manageable second down, so now you can pass or run. And it'll be Ellis again. Running game is getting established in a nice cut there. And Trewin makes the tackle on the low side on Ellis. But Ellis gains another little bit and we will have another first down here. Another six yards for Ellis. Ripping up yards on this running game. As I told you, Jason Terrace, the head coach of the Mustangs, not playing around, not fooling around, trying to set, send a message to the Mariners that we're going to pound the football. We have two, we have 300 pound offensive linemen that can get it done up front. Let's use these guys and let's pound the football here. And again, the handoff to Ellis. Now to the left side, sheds the first blocker. Ball is loose and recovered by the Mariners. Jumping on it is number 71. That's Mike Varis makes the grab and possession will go the other way. Well, I tell you what, there was a major collision in the open field with Ellis and I do believe it's Cunningham that has an outstanding individual tackle as Cunningham coming off the field being congratulated but he's a little slow getting up but that was a huge open field tackle and a collision on the football by Cunningham and Ellis but you got to be happy with the productivity by the Mustangs not good ball security as Ellis turned it over and coughed it up but Cunningham did an outstanding job of putting his hat on the football and knocking it free. So a missed opportunity gone by the wayside by some beautiful blocking up front by your big boys. But ball security biting the Mustangs in the butt here on this possession. 
After it was such a solid drive with the running game for the Mustangs, it's all for naught. And Clark again, that's mishandled as well, but he's able to recover. And he's taken down by a pair of Mustangs here, and a flag is on the field. Yeah, they need a turnover here. They need to continue the pressure and get the ball football back. But if you're the Mariners, ball security is going to have to be key as well. That quarterback and, and center exchange has to be clean. Not clean on that play and multiple penalties. And this has been part of the, the way things have been going for the Mariners. And they've been dodging bullets with getting turnover, with, excuse me, getting uh, multiple penalties when they have the football. A lot of procedure calls, a lot of offside calls, guys not lining up in the right position where they're supposed to be before the snap of the football. So they need to clean that up. You're winning the game. You're at you're winning 14 to 13 and still you're making all these major mistakes. So the Mustangs got to make up make sure that they pick up on these mistakes and make the Mariners pay. Mustangs want to rush five flags back out again as it looked like the defense got the jump here, but we'll see where it goes. Yeah, it looked like a legal procedure on the offense as the defense were able to get back, even if they did cross over that line of scrimmage, and it is right, another five yards, a legal procedure. They saw that rush coming. It looked like the Mustangs were bringing the house, and that front three for the Mariners got a little bit itchy, didn't hold their water on the snap of the footballs. So another breakdown and another mental breakdown for the Mariners offense and you cannot have that especially if you're in a dogfight on the road and you're searching for that first win of the season you got some of your good guys not able to go this afternoon you got guys that get got injured you got your best guy playing multiple positions offensively and you're still winning a football game you, got, you, the, you can only live by the sword so long before it catches up to you and a big opportunity defensively here for the Mustangs Mustangs rushed five to draw that initial play, and they're rushing five again. Though Rose drops in the back, and this handoff to Mins, or Mick Mins. He's got a lot of room to the right side, and he looks to break past Carmichael. He's got some daylight. One man to beat, and he's edged up, but he finally gets taken down there. Carmichael on the way back on his horse, and Rose as well joining in for the tackle, but he makes his way to the Moncton side of the field. Well, I tell you what, Eugene McMinns is some kind of talent because if you take a look at the replay here, if we can get it rolled back here from the truck, this guy makes something out of nothing. Defensively, there was great penetration in the backfield as the Mustangs, they pretty much had this one hemmed in, but the backside on the second cut, just wasn't there the defensive discipline wasn't there on the back side all the flow came on the front side where the play was initially going to start and McMinns did an outstanding job of reversing this field and using his speed to avoid tackles and get that big game but you got to give your hat you got to take your hat off to McMinns thus far this guy's been outstanding on the afternoon and a flag is down before the snap yeah, time count violation on the quarterback. Clark taking too much time to set up. Probably got to play a little late from the sideline. So another penalty. Despite the penalties, they've been overcoming these penalties regardless of what's happening this afternoon. They have probably had more penalties <laughs> in losses just as much as they had in gains. If we look at the if we had the opportunity to look at any of the stats, we'd probably see just about just even I wouldn't even see great outstanding stats meaning you know 100 yarder 100 yard rusher or 100 yard, we definitely don't have a 100 yard receiver or even close to it I think we got we got one pass completed by the Mariners and that was a touchdown pass but a big one thus far Clark fakes the handoff to McMinns he's looking up high and air mailing it up but cannot come down with it into double coverage intended receiver looked to be Bailey Duckendorf, but couldn't come down with it. Had an opportunity to get it to Duckendorf. Duckendorf had some space between him and the defensive back, but as you could see, not polished at in the passing game is Dave Clark. Had time to throw it. Good time by the offensive line, but that one was airmailed as he had some spacing there as the looks like the coaches on the Mariners were looking for a pass interference call, but that was definitely an uncatchable football. Yeah, a pair of Mustangs converged on him, but catchable for Deckendorf, though it was a little high. <laughs> a 
Like to see Clark settle into the pocket a little bit quicker off the exchange. Clark now back in the pocket. He'll let it go up high looking for oh. Wagaron. Nearly picked off there by McIntyre getting on the ladder. Nearly grabbing that one to take it away. Yeah, McIntyre in great position. Bobby McIntyre. Definitely a veteran throughout this, uh, within this Maritime Football League, a veteran from Acadia University. Played his earlier football for Fredericton, making the uh, the move over to the Mustangs. But he had an opportunity to make a big play. He's got to come up with that. It looked like he was thrown right to him. But it looked like it was a great defensive play made by the offense as the, the, the offensive wide receiver was able to break that one up and not, you know, get that turnover but he's got to come up with that turnover. McIntyre the seven time all-star 2015 most outstanding award winner as Clark now back on the run he's taken down behind that initial line of scrimmage a gain of about three here on third down but he's taken down very strongly by Gildas Kenge. Yeah Kenge outstanding job in the open field you can see he looked like he was giving up the edge there real just didn't give up on the play and an outstanding open field tackle bringing down Clark. Outstanding speed off the edge and that's what you see here. The Kenye, we haven't seen him in the second half and then that's about the guys on the sideline. The second and third unit, guys getting the opportunity to make plays and come in and they're fresh. Kenye fresh, able to get, you know, gave up the corner early on that rush, was able to make up ground and make that great open field tackle. Now they have a fourth situation, a punt situation, and they get the ball back. It can be a tough situation to try to balance all of those players in depth as Lush gets the punt up high, and Stevie Cormier will grab that. He's got a little bit of room, and he'll cut fourth and back, but gets tripped up there around the 47 or so, and the Mustangs will take the ball. Not a bad guy to have back in your punt return <laughs> as Team Cormier almost took this one the distance. As he almost shed that tackler there. You can see he an outstanding job avoiding the first tackler, making a miss. Crossing over from linebacker to the running back instincts taking over. Good ball security on that punt. So an opportunity here for the Mustangs to put points on the board. As you can see, Good block in the open field there. And he just almost able to keep his foot footing there. And it was going to be a little bit of a foot race between the two guys in front of him. But it looks like we got a moon. That looks like McMim's trying to get a blow on the sideline. Get that man an oxygen tank and get <laughs> Ellis a tackle. Ellis gets a first down yeah. off the first play from scrimmage for this drive. Another first down for the running back and Jason Terrace after the fumble going right back to him. Well, I'm going to stop talking because this is the way they should be. This is what way they're, uh, they're going to win this football game, giving Ellis the football. Now he's got to do a better job of securing the football, but he is getting driving lanes that are, are big as you know, can put a truck between the tackle, the offensive tackle and the defensive guard, sorry, the offensive guard and he's getting those lanes, he's, but he's got to secure the football and keep pounding this football and make the Mariners come up with some tackles and make some defense adjustments. Ellis, the Mount Allison Mountie, and now tossed to McEwen. He's upended head over heels, but he's yeah. able to gain eight or so. Yeah, the run in the middle of the field, the quick hitting runs, the quick hitters to the fullback as well as the, the long handoff behind the line of scrimmage to Ellis and letting Ellis see his way downfield with his vision have been there in this third quarter and they got to continue to pound the football. It is again the options. Both running backs in the backfield. Comfort now back to Ellis. Ellis but taken down just behind the line of scrimmage. Great job on the tackle there by number 27 Richard Lush who a both side player there, and he's able to make the tackle. As you can take a look here, they're able to block down, miss block, and penetration from the backside by the Mariners, able to stop the progress of Ellis. So good play defensively on that second down. Excuse me, that being Brandon Bernard with the tackle, number 97. And again, a flag down. Defense jumped up, and we'll yeah. see if they were coerced or if it was their own doing well the defense is pointing at the offense saying that they moved early but it was definitely the the defense that forced this motion and 
contact, and that's an easy first down. So another opportunity here for the Mustangs to put some points on the board. At the very least, get a single to tie this one up or a field goal to take the lead. Mustangs in opposing territory here. It is first and 10 for Comfort. Ellis in motion from the back. Now they'll go to Rose. Rose with that slot back cover. He'll make his way through one tackle. He's got another guy to meet, but he'll definitely have the first and then some. I think it's coming back. We can, it looks like a, there is a hold on the wide receiver on the edge. There's a flag down on the play. And it's definitely going to come back. It looks like Brown's getting caught again for the holding infraction. Beautiful kick out block. You can see in the replay by Aubrey Ellis right there. Boom, blows his guy up. He's down for the count, so there's the edge there, but you can see on the on the edge there, it looked just to hold, and that's a good call by the official over there as Brown had a little bit too much cloth on his defender as the that you cannot have that in that situation. In that situation, you definitely just gotta stand your ground and allow the guy try to make a play. As many yards as Rose had, you gotta make sure that you don't get that call and it comes all the way back. Now you're looking at a first and 20 situation. Dante gets in the man held up and now you go back to Ellis. Ellis has got a lot of room. He's tripped up in the backfield running his way through. He gets almost to the original line of scrimmage, yeah. so second and 10. Good gain on that first down. Got to continue to run the football. Pound the football. It seems to be the way that they're gaining traction here. But they can't have those penalties on in the running game. Those wide receivers got to clean up the blocking game and not get any type of infraction here when they're moving the football. We've got Rose in motion. We haven't seen Comfort throw a pass yet. He's going to roll out to his right. He's looking to do it, but instead he's got daylight. He's got a lot of room. He's going to make his way through, gets the block, and runs his way out of bounds around the 15. But that's a first down for the Mustangs quarterback. That was the right option there by Dan Comfort. He could have easily threw it out into the flats to Rose, but he pulled it down. Great decision and gained yardage with his legs. And ran out of bounds. As you can see, good ball fake. He had all day to throw. Pointing downfield, looking for multiple blocks as Mullally and Rose were leading the way. An outstanding block on the edge. You can see just out of the screen there by Rose. Great Comfort. grab in the truck there, that block. Comfort making sure he hangs on to the football, getting out of bounds. McEwen with the carry. He'll get a couple more as it really has been the running game, the staple. Comfort. Wanted to pass that last time, but had the opening. He hasn't thrown a pass yet in the second half. We have a Mariner down who's injured on the play. Yeah, I didn't need to. And then you and I talked about it in the halftime break. They were, they were going to come out in this third quarter and make a statement with that running game. The running game has been good all afternoon long. And, I mean, they just got to have better ball security. In that first drive, they were deep inside the Mariners' territory. But it was, you know, snuffed out, nullified by a great block, a great hit into the open field. As you can see in the replay here, taking on the block and a good block there up front. It looks like Rose was able to get on his defender and knock him to the ground. So let's hope that he's okay. As you can see him holding his neck in the neck area, and that's not good. That's Matt Bruce down for the Mariners, number 22, as we saw in the foreground. Can we take another look at it, guys, just to have a look and put the focus on it? Yeah, Bruce not in a good situation right now, and looks like the injury might be sustained in the neck area as he tried to take on that block by Rose. Rose getting the betterment, but he's back to his feet, and that's what you like to see. Looks like he's... He's okay, holding his neck a little bit there in the chin area. There, we'll have a look at it now. It's in the foreground coming up as McEwen makes his break. You're going to see it here, yeah, Rose jumping in right there. Yeah, Rose, the good block, good clean block. L maybe a little bit too high with the hands. It looked like maybe the shoulder pads got pushed up in that neck area. Let's hope that he's okay and able to bounce back here in this drive if the Mustangs don't score on this play. Looking at 526 on the clock here in the third quarter, MFL on Rogers TV, Mike Sanderson, Vince Williams has a call with you here. Mustangs 1-1 one and one on the year. Island Mariners 0-2. Oh they're looking for their first win, and they've played the Mustangs 
play for play so far in this one. Now late in the third quarter, Mustangs pouncing in the red zone, and we'll see what Dan Comfort has up his sleeve as he's in the shotgun with a pair of backers in the backfield. Ellis on the run. He'll look to feed it. A pass in the flat, and that's caught there by Mullally. Makes a couple of moves. He sheds another blocker. He's out and in the center. He's got some daylight. He'll go for the touchdown. That's outstanding. Bravo, Mullally. Bravo. You bounce back. You're a rookie in this league, and you bounce back from some jitters in that first half where you were able to make plays with your hands. You just didn't get it done. But on this play, the throw wasn't the throw was there, a little low, but he was able to handle it, and then his athleticism takes over. First cut back makes that man miss. Whoop! There's a miss right there. Open field breaks that tackle. Looking for a block coming back the other way. Looking for another block. Whoop! Dude miss, makes him miss. He's cutting across the field. Just uses speed and athleticism and, and he races his man to the corner. Easy touchdown. Bravo, young man. You just made up for those mistakes in the first half, and that's what you get from the, that's what you're getting from this team. Jason Terrace talked about it. His young stars maturing after every play and every game as they go along. And you good it's good to see that that young man making a play and making up for the early mistakes he had in the first half. Yeah, the point after is good. Mustangs will go up by six and you talk about Malali, some excellent moves. There were a number of defenders with Malali-shaped clouds they tried to grab onto. They weren't able to get a hold of him. He shaked them off, two or three of them, and was able to cut all the way across the field to make his way into the end zone. A great job by the 18-year-old from Nigeria. As we mentioned, played high school football this year with Harrison Trimble, the Trojans. Yeah, and making uh, that transition, playing against high school boys and playing against grown men. It's not an easy transition. But uh, I had an opportunity to see him in Halifax, and he made some outstanding plays down there, similar to the one he just made this afternoon. He caught a, a screen play on the right side of the field and ran it and took it to the house 60 yards out after making the first man miss. So he's got speed and he's got strength and an ability. He just needs to fine-tune catching the football and securing it first. Yeah, just taking care of those steps as they come, and LeBlanc will kick this one away, and it'll be grabbed there by... Number two, he's got a some couple room. of breaks. He's got some room to come his way through, and that's Neil Cunningham. He's taken down around the Mustangs 50 and some good field position for the island. Well, I tell you what, Neil Cunningham has been an unsung hero for the Mariners as well. Made a great defensive play in the first drive of the Mustangs, breaking up that, uh, that momentum, knocking and forcing that fumble out of Aubrey Ellis in an outstanding play here on this return setting up some good field position for the Mariners probably their best off a kickoff this afternoon with five minutes to work with Dave Clark here at the tail end of this third quarter and the Mustangs got a score on their last drive and the island will want to counter yeah we'll see what type of response they have here you got to think that McMims is probably going to get back into the action offensively either by the running back position, slot back position, but he's been getting it done as a tailback. So you got to think that, okay, see, that's a start that you can't have. We had a guy coming in late from the sidelines, maybe with the play call or didn't have the play call, and you got a time count violation. Another penalty on their offensive team. You can't have that. It's been, it's been pretty much first and 15 or first and 20 when they start every possession here. But you, you can only live by the sword so many times. Now you set up the defense to bring more pressure on first down and set up a second and long. A miscommunication between Zach Davidson, possibly the offense coordinator, Matt Burke. His in comes McMinns again. He's got daylight, but a flag is down. He dodges another tackle in Rose. He's got daylight up ahead, but catching him from behind is Stevie Cormier. Yeah, that's coming back. The flag is down and down early. Another... There's Breakdown mentally, no end for the offense of the Mariners. The wide receiver a little late coming up to the line of scrimmage. Didn't get there in time as McMims was able to make DJ Carmichael miss in space. Carmichael coming up but didn't break down properly and whiffed on that tackle. Now let's take a look here. Good pitch, good delivery. Carmichael had the opportunity, didn't break down. Mims is gone, off to the races but a good play defensively, and Cormier runs him down from behind. What can he not do defensively this afternoon? Stevie Cormier not allowing that touchdown, but it was going to come back anyway because of a legal procedure 
on the offense, not lining up that wide receiver on the right side. Yeah, as we've mentioned repeatedly throughout the evening about how undisciplined play, and not so much in terms of anger, but so much in terms of just getting your men on the field and everybody set up. As Clark, he fakes the handoff. He'll go for himself and gain about six or so back to the Moncton side of the field, second and about 12. So good play. Good yardage, manageable second down as Clark calling his own number. You've seen this before. McMims, Clark, good open field tackle there by Rose. And Rose now starting to play both ways for the Mustangs, offense and defensively. So good tackle by him playing linebacker position. Him and looks like Stevie Cormier are going to be the linebackers the rest of the way here. That is them. Lining up in that spot, Carmichael will come back in as well. And a big hit there on Clark. But he's able to unload the football and get a gain of about five or six. That's surprising because that looked like some good form. Good pitch and catch. Clark dropping back, had some time and delivered a nice ball in the middle of the field. Let's take a look here. Sets up. Bearing down with the pressure. Little wobbly, but he gets it there and hits its, hits its target. Darren Dennis with the grab there in the middle of the field. So third and seven. Clark in the shotgun, two in motion. Clark wanted a set to throw. He's grabbed there, and they're going to take him down. Sack on third down. Para Mustangs coming in. Stevie Cormier joined along with him. Number 67, Sebastien Charette getting the half sacks. Yeah, Charette and Kenge. And cleaned up there by Cormier, making sure that Clark doesn't get out of that pocket. You can see Charette there coming up. And cleaning it up, 75 and 67. They've been good the second half. Didn't see a lot of, those, a lot of the, these two guys in the first half, but... They are getting the job done. Only rushing three are the Mustangs as they're playing a little bit more zone. Clark's going to take it here on fourth and ten. He'll take the snap and the shotgun. He'll go back to throw. He wants to settle and let it go. He rolls to his right. He'll toss it up way high. Is there anyone there? No dice. That one falls just in front of the intended wide receiver, number 11, Chad Blanchard. A turnover on downs. Mustangs will take control of the football. So... That time count violation hurt the Mariners at the start of this possession in great field position. Had an opportunity to put some points on the board. Great pressure coming late. And once again, Stevie Cormier not allowing Clark to step up and deliver a clean ball downfield. Mustangs doing a good job defensively, and that's what they need. They need stops. Now they are containing the two weapons for the Mariners. Clark and McMims. Now they need to put points back on the board. Go back to that running game. See what Comfort decides to do. It's a handoff to Ellis. No surprise there. A roll out to his left. He'll cut back. And he's wrapped up there and a flag down. It'll be a first down depending on how the flag wraps up. And that's going to come back. It looks like a hold on the offense. And that's before yards were gained. And not the start to this possession the Mustangs were envisioning. I mean, they had a goat standing block at the attack. But then when things got, got a, a little unraveled as Ellis was making his way downfield, let's take a look here. It looked like it might have been a hold on the edge. Can't really see. Oh, there it is by the fullback McEwen as he was dragging down his man downfield. So that's a good call by the official in the open field as McEwen with a takedown, didn't need to. All he really had to do was just, you know, keep his space between him and the defender and allow Ellis to make a decision in which direction he was going to go. First down and 20, ball is at the Moncton 41. Comfort will hand it back off to Ellis. Ellis wrapped up immediately and thrown back past the line of scrimmage. That's a good defensive play coming off the block and then blowing it up. And not allowing Ellis to gain any type of traction. Mentioned several times in that second quarter, both of these front three for these teams defensively have played outstanding. And that was an outstanding play there. Now we have a second and long. You got to think they're going to try to put this ball in the air. 
Comfort will find Rose in the flat on the left side. He's going to try to cut around his defender, but he's going to be wrapped up by a number of Mariners joining him there. A gain of maybe three and third and long coming up. Yeah, good battle though. Good pitch and catch to Rose. Rose getting as much as he could off Take of that over, short pass, but good gain Still tackling by the Mariners and cleaning this up. Rose trying to take on four, maybe the five tacklers in there. Not much blocking off of that quick hitter. Nope, that's one thing. You've got Rose open, but nobody with him, and that's the toughest part. He had a great block on Walsh to start it, but then the mass of bodies came in. He couldn't make a move around any of them. So this is the last play of the third quarter coming up. So we've hit zeros on the clock. Comfort will drop back to throw. He'll put it up in the air looking for Rose. Can he make the grab? No, he can't. It's bothered in there was Trewin to make the play and looking for the first down on that one. Can't do it. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Rose trying to make a play on that ball. It was definitely a good ball by Comfort. The open up at the slot back position delivered in a good the spot the there, had an opportunity, but good break up defensively. John Just didn't rebound. have enough juice at the end of that throw is Rose going both ways. And you're asking a lot from Rose playing the linebacker position, trying to run down Clark and trying to run down McMims on the defensive side. And then on the, the offensive side, you're looking for him to make a 15-yard catch downfield on an open up. <laughs> it's space. That's tough to ask from, from, from a guy, but uh, these teams are going to continue to roll with their best guys. As both teams rolling guys and using multiple players on both sides of the football, and that seems to be the trait this, this evening for both of these teams if they're going to gain a win. That ball actually hitting Trevin on the helmet just on the way in before it hit Rose. As we'll set for the first play of the fourth quarter, it looks like it will be Scott LeBlanc from the back end, so he'll probably be kicking this away I would expect from the Mustang 40 and it is McMinns in the backfield for the Mariners yeah and it looks like a little bit of confusion here on where the the ball was being placed it was definitely fifth fourth down and 15 it looked like they had a fourth down and 20 but they corrected it here so the lineup at the 45 and it's Scott LeBlanc in the back and he's well protected the long snap is good, and he'll let it fly. So it's a long, booming kick from LeBlanc. McMinns will catch it at about his 15. He'll try to make his way out. We'll walk five yards back. Now he'll cut another one, ultimately gain three or four. But it's a long field for the Mariners here this first drive of this fourth quarter. Yeah, good directional the kick the there by LeBlanc. Be Not allowing McMinns to to get a full head of steam and get his shoulders turned downfield and get upfield. Good cu kick coverage by the special teams of the Mustangs. Now you got this offense pinned in deep. You know that Clark's not been good throwing the football. You got to think that they're going to try to run the football either to McMims or trying to use some type of misdirection with Clark. So if I'm the Mustang defense, I am making sure that my front three, as well as my linebackers, are in the run lanes and playing defense responsible and not overplaying the football. McMinn's the only man in the backfield. Clark tosses it to Min. McMinn's, we can call him whatever we want. He's gotten the ball about 50 <laughs> times. He tries to make a shed on Zachary Terrio, who comes in and makes the tackle on him, a gain of about three. Good defensive discipline. They're making sure that they minimize the run of McMinn's coming up and making sure that the tackle is be the behind the line of scrimmage. The you can see the coverage there. Carmichael getting off his block. Terrio doing an outstanding job of shedding his block and blowing up McMinn's in the backfield. We've talked about it. McMinn's a guy that you need to gang tackle from the looks of things, and All there has been gangs to tackle him ever since that's really happened. It's actually a loss of a yard, second and 11. Well, you better make sure if it's going to be an open field tackle and it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's better be form tackling. If you're trying to go high on McMims, he will shed you with a stiff arm, and we've seen it multiple times this evening. Clark rolls out to his right, puts it up in the air. McIntyre wants it almost, but could not come up with the catch. McIntyre, the first one to it, thrown to a spot. Roy Garant tried to make the grab. He was the intended receiver, but McIntyre so very close to coming up with the interception. Another break up by McIntyre being in the right position positionally, but he's got to come up with that football. Let's take a look at it. 
Just a lame duck pass there by Clark. Not sure where he was trying to th go with this, but he definitely threw that ball errant as he was trying to hook up with his receiver who ran a corner route. And McIntyre read it all the way on the backside, but he's got to come up with that football and change the field position in, that, in this game. And, and that would have been huge for the Mustangs. Looked like the meeting decided to where the football was going to go, and McIntyre got there first. This time a catch in the flat on the left side. And still up with him, McMinns. No surprise there as Carmichael finally takes him down. But a nice grab, and from looks of things, a first down on third and long for the Mariners. Breaking tackles once again in the open field. One-on-one -on -one tackles, no form tackling on that particular play on McMims as he was able to run through tacklers and pick up that first down. The point of the attack was there and shut down by the Mustangs, but just poor tackling was able, was able, able he was able to shed blockers and tacklers and get downfield. Terrio there, missed opportunity. Augustine, not sure what he was doing with that shoulder, should have wrapped him up and tried to force the football out, but can't have that in the open field. Augustine, a young football player, just signed, as you mentioned, with St. Mary's University. That's not going to get it done at the next level. McMinns is down, and we've seen him shaken up on numerous times this afternoon. Back. And, I mean, well, when you have the ball every second opportunity, I mean, sure, it's going to shake you up, but this one got him a little bit more than what we've seen so far, and he's struggling to get up here. Yeah, it looks like he's favoring that right shoulder, right elbow area. So now where do you go if you're the Mariners? Do you rely on the arm of Dave Clark? Or do you rely on the feet and the ability to make plays using his legs? If I'm going to pick one of the two, I'm definitely going to use the legs before I use the passing game. Now he's gotten away with some errant passes not being able to get picked off by this Mustang defense. But he's got to use some imagination here in this running game in the absence of their best player, Eugene McMims. Yeah, and Dempsey as well in the first quarter, which leaves Dave Clark with, well, who knows what he's got back there, but he's got Richard Lush in the backfield. Well, we're going to see right now. And uh, it looks like it will be Lush. Lush is tied up right there at the line of scrimmage and taken down by King Gay. King Gay is playing outstanding in the second half. He's been a force up front in that front three. And he's done an outstanding job running guys down. He ran down Clark in that third quarter, nullifying a big gain. And right there, he was able to get off the block and make a huge play in the backfield and giving up a minimal game. It looked like maybe a foot on that first down. So you got to think in this second down, it's a passing situation, but will they pass? They don't have their best receiver out there. And Clark is he's not the greatest quarterback when throwing the football. Well, he's stepping back to throw and cut across to Stevie Cormier, nearly picking it off with one hand, and that's one he's going to want to have back. It'll be third down and ten. Just not sure where that football was going as it looked like the receiver was already ran by the window. Good delivery. Lots of time to throw it. Feet moving around, though. The feet not set as it looked like he was trying to hit his slot back in the middle of the field. But Cormier, an opportunity to change the field with that turnover and another missed opportunity as he's showing the crowd with his hands like, well, I'm not really a receiver. I'm a running back <laughs> by trade that catch, that doesn't catch passes out of the backfield. I get it hand off to me. Well, that pass was one that shows Dave Clark as a running back turned quarterback, and now he'll go to the legs with a little bit of room. Cormier chasing him down, and he will take him yeah. down. Steve Cormier, outstanding job defensively. That's got to be his 10th tackle on the evening. He's been a force, and that is beautiful play in the open field as he's able to shed the block in. And he started from the defensive end position, and he's able to track down one of the fastest guys on the field. Great open field tackle and nullifies that first down. So a huge stop defensively for the Mustangs. Great individual play there by the All-Star 
and the ex-MVP, two-time MVP, Steve Cormier. Yeah, that play just down to athleticism, the athleticism of Dave Clark, the athleticism of Stevie Cormier, two former running backs coming together. Certainly we know they can both get it done with the feet, but Cormier in pursuit was able to have the best of them there. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. Gambling. Fakes the pitch, and in there was Colwell, a flag down. Colwell takes yeah. him down in the backfield. We'll see where the flag goes. Got to give kudos to the defensive coordinator. Looks like a hold on. No, nope, it's going to go against... As we can see, the pointing of the Mariners there. And it, the Mariners believe it's going on the defense. It might be an illegal defensive call. There was a lot of guys in the backfield on the other side of the football for the Mariners. Yeah, and it looks like an illegal defense called. A tough play and a tough pill to swallow. Fourth down and four, and that's a five-yard penalty, and that will be a first down for the Mariners extending this drive. Yeah, it's, those of you who don't know, it is part of a targeting rule. You have to be in the box to blitz or make any kind of play on the quarterback, and that's anywhere between the lineman's inside feet or outside feet. Your right. inside foot has to be within that box. Yeah, that rush has to come inside the defensive interior, not outside on the edge. And it looked like the linebacker released on the outside edge there. They brought the house to try to shut down the run game, and that was the reason why they were in the backfield and they're able to snuff out that play, but the legal defense snuffs out any type of changing of the field and turnover and extends this drive for the Mariners as McMims is back to in the game, and it didn't take him long to shake off that uh, that apparent elbow injury. Yeah, he's, he's there. He's physically there. We'll see if he's... Oh, truly there, him. but... Uh, they're going to go to him. I'm you, you know he's going to get the football. That's the thing. Whether he's physically there or he's fully there, it really doesn't matter. He's going to get his touches. Or they're going to use him as a decoy. That's for sure. 10-14. And even in this case, if he's not even able to catch a football, you might keep him out there just for the decoy anyway. Mm -hmm. Because he's had so many touches so far in this game this evening. And he's there talking to Clark. He's there talking to Roy Garan, the another wide receiver in the option. He's going to line up likely in the backfield here as we're trying to sort out exactly where the football goes off that illegal defense call it seems to be everything sorted out it'll be dropped just ahead of the 40 it's the Mariners with a fresh set of downs here for Dave Clark to work with he'll line up in a long shot gun he's got McMinns on the back end and three in motion look to McMinns instead he'll drop and run for himself and he'll run it up the gut for about four Good minimal gain there by Clark, but a good uh, open field tackle again by Kenge. Dave Clark in the carry. A pickup of three. It'll be second and seven. So second and long passing situation once again, but they've been not playing the percentages this, half this afternoon and into the evening here at a Rocking Stone Field as this offense is pretty much showing a little bit of everything on every down and distance situation. When you think they're gonna pass, they run. When you think they're gonna run, they pass. Yes, five receivers are out. Clark's looking to the extreme right. Grab there, Roy Garant. He'll run up to a pair of Mustangs and get taken down there, but they're in the Moncton side of the field, first down. Yeah, that was a major gamble and a mix up in miscommunication in the defensive backfield as Jamie Drysdale just totally didn't complete his assignment either in the flats or man to man. Let's take a look as Clark was able to roll out and pick a wide open receiver. As you can see, coming late into the screen, number 20 there for the Mustangs is Drysdale. As he initially was in great position, peeked into the backfield, made it a little bit of a move inside around the linebacker territory and didn't get out to the flats. And that wide open pass was able to be hooked up between Clark and his receiver. Darren Dennis declared himself as... A wide receiver on that play could have caused some confusion. There will be a flag on the play, but McMinns will make it happen again. Spinning, trying to evade a tackle from Cormier for a gain of about three, but it's going to come back. So it uh, looks like an offside on the slot backs from the Mariners, nullifying this gain. Another penalty. Definitely in the double digits for penalties for the Mariners and we might be over a hundred yards on the evening in penalties for the Mariners but still down by six a converted touchdown gives them the lead 
Like you don't usually see this in conventional football where you give up <laughs> that amount of yards and penalties, especially on the offensive side. It's not really coming on the defensive side. It's the mental game of their receivers not lining up and going offside has hurt them this afternoon and yeah, this evening. It's preparatory penalties for the most part as Dave Clark airs it out. He's looking up high, looking for Roy Garreau, comes down with it. He makes the catch. In traffic, outstanding catch by Garreau, but that was, at best, not the greatest pass, but going for it all, Clark. The delivery initially looked good, but just you can see that was a wounded duck. But coming up in traffic and fighting for the football, and an outstanding catch, and now they're in business here inside the 30-yard line. An outstanding grab by Roy Garand there, who was thrown into double coverage, really in a toss-up position, was able to make the effort make the play. This time a run to McMinns. McMinns finds the hole. He's taken down by Matt Cormier, and this one looks to be a gain of seven or eight. Yeah, they're going to go to McMinns definitely exclusively inside the red zone here <laughs> if they're going to try to get this one done and complete this drive and finish this drive with a touchdown. McMinns, you got to think still if he, looking, if he a has little, a pulse, a he's going to get the ball. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it looks like he's, he's still feeling that effect of that right elbow, whether it's in the right elbow area or the rib cage area, but he definitely doesn't look 100%. But as we said, it doesn't really matter his condition. Yeah. He's going to get the ball no matter what. They're going to make. They're going to try to make sure that he makes a play. Clark in the shotgun. Looked left. Now he's going right. We'll put his head down, make his way through. He's got a couple of blocks, and he'll go for the first down and first and goal here from about seven yards out. Yeah, touchdown save and tackle there in the open field by Stevie Cormier. Great play call, though by the Mariners. They set up the double wall there. It looked like a double block as McMims came out of the backfield and walled off that uh, that corner. And they basically were relying on Dave Clark to make the first man miss, and that he did. He was able to gain yardage down the sideline, and Cormier able to save that touchdown run then a good open field tackle. First and goal at about the seven. Dave Clark under center. He'll pitch it to McMinns. McMinns with a hole. He'll make his way through but cannot quite get his way there. The Mustangs closed up the ship pretty quick before it could get there. With a gain of about five. Eugene McMinns on the carry. It'll be second down. They're probably going to go right back to McMinns. Either left or right. I would think short side here. Bring either the slot back in motion, the crack down on the end, or bring a linebacker or a double. They're going to get a double on the edge. So look to see one of the ends trying to come off a double block here, and McMims exclusively is going to get this football. That's the thing with McMinns. He can line up anywhere and take that ball, but instead they go with Clark. Clark looking to his right oh, side. He's, he's got room. In. He's got the touchdown. Yeah, they walked into all that space. It looked like initially they were using McMinns as a decoy. Just a roll out to the right. Looked like Clark had a two-way go, either pass it or run it in. And McMinns ran in front of him and led the charge as he walked in, as you can see. Misdirection, McMims coming around the corner here. Good seal block on the edge. And not even Stevie Cormier could come to the rescue and save this one as Dave Clark walks in untouched. So an opportunity to take the lead after all these penalties and miscues and <laughs> breakdowns defensively, breakdowns on the special teams. And here we are with a tie football game at 521. If you were with us pretty much from start to now where we are going into the finish, you've got to be scratching your head at home thinking, how is this game tied up at 20 with all these mistakes by the Mariners and all these opportunities by the Mustangs? But the thing is, the Mustangs had the opportunities and they didn't make the Mariners pay. This is the reason why the game is in the balance right now on a converted field, sorry, a converted touchdown to take the lead for the Mariners, but it looked like they're lining up to go for two. Yeah, they called a timeout here and trying to make the decision, and now it looks like that is <laughs> the lineup. 
Looking to snap the tie. No, it oh, will be. It was be a kick. It, it will be a kick. But it's hard to tell here from the booth whether it's a kicker or because of the numbers and the positioning of the players. And it almost looks like, you know, everybody on the field is playing some sort of offensive game. Either they're a running back or a slot back. They don't look like a con the conventional. The kicker doesn't look like a conventional kicker. No, that's for sure. You've got Cam Walsh to take the snap. He's lined up there, but you've got the kicker standing right next to him, and you've got motion at the line of scrimmage. Now you've got Trewin finally lining up for the chance at the point after and break the deadlock. He'll put it up in the air, and that will... That'll go. I'm not sure how we got here, but we are here. <laughs> we... We got a we got an old fashioned barn burner. This one's gonna come down to to what might come down to the very last possession. And if you are familiar with these two teams, last year in the final regular season game, where both teams needed a win to move on to the playoffs, and it came down to the very last play as PEI unable to convert a touchdown in the end zone, a controversial play where it looked like it was a catch on TV on the replay, but it was the call on the field was an incomplete pass, and the uh, PEI team missed the playoffs, and the Mustangs went on through the playoffs and lose that championship game to the Wanderers. But uh, these two teams with very entertaining football this evening. The Wanderers in action as well against Nova Scotia today. So we've got 5.21 to go, and the kick from Trewin is short. It'll bounce on the ground and grab there, and a number of flags down. It's grabbed by Matt Jack. Yeah, it looks like interference on a loose ball called on the kicking team. And it looked like it will, against, it will go against the Mariners, and it will be the Mustang football. Not sure what this gamble's all about. If I was the Mariners, I mean, after taking the lead with lots of time left, I would think that you'd kick the ball deep down in their own territory and force them to drive the length of the field at least 80 yards. Not sure if that's the right decision, but that's been the way things have been going all afternoon and into the evening now for these two teams when it comes to the kicking game. You're not sure what you're going to get from the special teams, either for either punting game or the kickoff game. You think you're going to get a conventional kick that's going to go deep. Nope, they pull up, the, pull the brakes out and say, hey, we're going to onside kick this because there's been a void where the upbacks are not coming up in time and recovering the football, not knowing that it's a live football. It's, it's Canadian football, no matter if it's 10 men or 12 men. On the kickoff, the football is live. Somebody has to jump on the football. The offensive team that's kicking it and the, the defensive team that's uh, trying to defend it and get the ball back, the ball is up for grabs for both teams. So you got to get on the football. But on this particular case, the kicking team defend, uh, interfered with the receiving team, and this is the reason why we have uh, – Interference on a loose ball on the kicking team, and it will be great field position for the Mustangs. A little bit of confusion Just on not the sure field. Why. <laughs> a lot of time kicked off the clock. It looked like the kickoff went at about 4.58 or so, and we're now to 4.25. Not sure why, because it really didn't move that much, and not sure why they ticked time off. It looked like when they were trying to set up and figure out where the ball was supposed to be positioned, the clock moved. And I'm not sure if the officials were aware of that, but the clock was moving as they were trying to set things up. After a dead ball in this particular situation, the clock should not move because the head official, the referee, on the evening, number 85, Patrick Fairweather, is the only guy that can wind time in, and I didn't see him wind time in. There is confusion on both sides of the football. And so now we got a re Now it's been moved up a bit. little bit. Yeah, it looks like that might be the case. It is the Becca Bowl of the Moncton Mustangs. <laughs> hashtag Becca told me to. Be sure to check that out. Great job by the Mustangs in this hashtag Becca Bowl to donate all of the uh, gate admissions to the Rebecca Schofieldner family. Just want to make sure that. Well, I tell you what, Mike, this <laughs> Becca Bowl has been 
It's been very interesting. We have seen some strange calls by both of these teams when it comes to the kicking game. We've seen some some things I haven't seen in years in football and confusion with the officials trying to line things up on who gets the ball. But uh, they look like they sorted things out here. As it Time is back up to 5.21, by the way, which means we would have lost almost a full minute. Yes, absolutely. So they were able to get that corrected. It looks like it's just going to be a re-kick as Trewin lines up just along with the Mariners. It seems like we're just going to forget that happened. We'll yeah. just do it again. A re-kick minus 10 yards. So Trewin lines up for maybe the most important kick of this game so far. Mariners with a one-point lead. He's got to kick this deep. And steady squibs it. It'll be grabbed there. To the wrong man. To the wrong man. Stevie Cormier dodges a tackle. He's got one on the back, and he's taken down around the 47. So the Mustangs get even better field position than they anticipate. Now and we we've got, got a, a yeah, we got brouhaha. A <laughs> it's both feet. It looks like both benches. Oh, well, it looks like the Mariners bench is trying to clear off. Not sure where. They are going, but they need to get off the football field before guys get ejected for leaving the bench. In the case of the Mariners, they might have been the whole bench just to meet <laughs> half of the Mustangs bench. When you're looking in terms of depth, they felt they had to cover for their guy. But discipline is rearing its head here as the tie up in the back. Cormier got a nice run on it and was able to recover to about the 47 and then a pair of players getting tangled up in the back. So this is going to be interesting to see which way the penalties go. Let's take a look here. Cormier almost breaking that tackle. Look like that tackle. And you can see behind the play, these two guys getting tied up as McEwing, the big fullback slash tight end for the Mustangs, getting tied up with his man from the Mariners. And you can see in the background there is the clearing of the bench of the Mariners coming to the aid of one of their players. That's the toughest play you definitely this late in the game. And really, with the amount of players on the roster you have, you can't afford oh. to lose anybody to a disqualification. Well, the Mustangs can, but not the Mariners because they've been playing with multiple players going both ways. And now Dave Clark has checked in the defense now. Now he's going both ways. So now you got your starting quarterback by the looks of it. You got McMinns on the field, looking to line up possibly defensive back. Yes, McMinns, another two way player, and it looked like Clark was out there initially. But he runs back to the sideline, maybe giving an encouraging word to his defense, maybe to stay a little bit more disciplined. Right now, more than ever, do they need discipline defensively. They have struggled with that type of the discipline in the offensive game, but they overcome it with this one-point lead. Now they're looking to try to overcome the, the that type of efficiency on the defensive end. But we got to sort this out right now, and we're not sure how. And it looks like we got uh, unsportsmanlike or unnecessary roughness on both teams. And not sure if we got ejections on both sides. So I'm not sure if the officials gave us the final call on this situation. So let's try to listen in and see what Patrick Fairweather has to say. Okay, so we got a 15-yard penalty, unnecessary roughness on McEwing. And then we got an objectional conduct, a 10-yard penalty on the Mariners so a difference of five yards that's offset so additional five yards at the end of the run will put the ball a little bit more deeper inside the Mariners territory yeah we're looking at a line of scrimmage around the 52 actually correction they're actually going five yards back from the uh, the end of the run because it was a 15 yarder on the Mustangs and a 10 yarder on the Mariners. Cormier was taken down to the 47. They put the spot back to the Mariner 52 and Comfort will line up in the shotgun with two in the backfield. He'll hand it off to Ellis. That's worked so well in the second half so far. He hands across to switch hands and avoid the strip and he gets about five. Good open field tackle there by Lush but good penetration 
securing the football at the end of that run by Ellis. Now Ellis is going to be huge right now in the running game. As you can see the edge being sealed. McEwen with a good block up front and a point of attack. Osman as well getting downfield and, and running through his block and open up that hole. The big boys up front for the Mustangs are going to be huge right now. Slot back handoff to Malali. He's got a stiff arm on one defender. Avoids a second one. He's got the first and more. It looks like he'll be wrapped up and out of bounds around the 32, but a great run by the rookie receiver. Yeah, great play call by the offensive coordinator of the Mustangs. Great misdirection as they were able to set that up with the running inside, the inside running attack by Ellis. As you could see in the replay here, let's take a look. The decoy there, good kick out block there on the edge, sealing the edge there, and it's just all individual effort after that. Good stiff arm in the open field there by Malali. Malali making up for the earlier mistakes in that first and second quarter. It's been very good in this third and fourth. Very quick handoff to McEwen, who's met in the backfield, and that'll be tackled for a loss. Alex Doyle on the carry. Loss of a yard will be second and 11. One of the rare runs for a loss for the Mustangs so far in this one, but a loss of a yard or so. They'll go second and 11. Comfort in the shotgun. Two in the backfield. Flags down. Ellis from the far side of the backfield. He'll make his way up the left side. Send one tackler to the ground, but he'll make his way down too, and we'll see how the flags go. Yeah, we either got offside or we got legal procedure. It looks like we got offside on the defense. So I'll move it up five yards and repeat second down. Let's take a look here. And it looks like it comes from the big boys up front. Yet yeah, early movement yep. in the neutral zone. Couldn't get back in time, but you got to continue to play. And not give up the big gainer, so the Mustangs opting to take the five yards and repeat that second down. So we talked about it, the discipline not showing up. is showing up as, you know, rearing his ugly head right now. But you got to give credit to Dan Comfort using that hard snap count and drawing the, the defense offside. Yeah, we've seen a number of plays from Comfort so far this evening using that hard snap count and catching those linemen. Making a move a little bit towards the line of scrimmage, making that step up into the neutral zone. It's Comfort again in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Ellis. Ellis met behind the line, another flag down. It looks like we got a legal procedure. Might have been right offside on the offense, so both teams struggling on the line of scrimmage. Receivers going offside. Defense interior going offside. Brandon not Bernard with the tackle. I'm not sure what we're going to get at the end of this game. <laughs> it might be a Fumaruski or a, a Hail Mary might decide this one. Or even a Rouge to force overtime. But right now, I'm not sure what the distance on the leg of their kicker, the Mustangs kicker, Scott LeBlanc, has in him. But it looks like he's definitely in field goal range right now. 3.26 to play. That could come into a factor. The call was no flag. Third down and six. Comfort again in the shotgun. Fake handoff to Ellis. He'll roll out to his right. He's got a lot of room. He's going to take it for the first down and then some. Still room on the right side. He's got one cut he left score. to make his way through. He could score. And he will. Beautiful run and decision by Dan Comfort. Had a lot of room. Beautiful play call. Good play fake behind the line of scrimmage. Drew the defense to the right side. The flow, everybody bit on the ball fake. They thought the ball was going to Ellis as Comfort was able to hide the football. Come out of that and let's take a look. Great ball fake here as Ellis was able to draw everybody to the right side of the field. And then Dan Comfort takes over in the open field. Great decision pointing downfield looking for the block. Good blocks downfield, and just at the end, it just comes to comes down to determination and athleticism and comfort stretching out for that touchdown. Great run, big run, and a big moment by your star quarterback. Yeah, that play all comes down to Ellis with the sell. That's one of the best sells on a fake handoff you'll see. Ellis with the big clamp down and ran the other way, and comfort saw a lot of room on the right side, and he took the right call and took advantage of it. And he, They're going to go for two here. The Mariners want to talk it over, calling a timeout. They probably didn't expect 
the Mustangs to go into for a two-point conversion, but it makes sense here because... They want to make it seven points. Exactly. Yeah. A converted touchdown to tie this one up and not a converted touchdown to lose this game. So good time -out call by the Mariners, but an opportunity for the Mustangs to regroup and make sure that everybody's on the right page to execute this particular play. This is a big moment in the game where they need these two points. Mariners, uh, that's their last time out. Mustangs still have their two, but it has not been preparation issues in the case of the Mustangs. The offense has been pretty well prepared yeah. from the snap. That has been the Mariners' issue in terms of penalties. A lot of penalties before the snap and a lot of offsides as well. Yeah. we'll Undisciplined see what football has been plagued them, and they've been playing with this all evening long. They've been playing with, you know, they've been living by the sword, and it's finally bit them in this particular drive, and the Mustangs finally took advantage of the miscues of those disciplined, undisciplined plays by the Mariners, but an outstanding run on the rollo by Dan Comfort, all set up by the run, and the run came early in that third quarter by Aubrey Ellis. Ellis had his own problems with securing the football in the opening drive, but he's been very good in gaining yardage down the field, going over 100 yards on the evening, running the football, and that great play fake, and you mentioned showing that he maybe had secured the football, drew the defense. Comfort, he'll pass it across the left side. Connection is not found. Looking for Chris Brown about two yards into the end zone. Had it in the hands and lost it. So the two-point conversion is dropped, and that will be a five-point lead for the Mustangs with 3.08 to play. So now a touchdown will win the game if there's no time left. For the Mariners, Brown has to come up with that football. Good pattern, able to shake his defender and create the space. The delivery of the football was there. It was only it was in a position where only Brown could make the play, but he was able unable to come up with that catch as that delivery of the football was right there on the money from Dan Comfort. And we have seen this this evening that the Mustang receivers have has have has had their struggles securing the football, in particularly in the passing game when given the opportunities. But that comes with, you know, maturity. You got a young football team relying on some rookies in some key situations, in particularly in the passing game in young receivers. So now it's up to the defense now to come up with a huge stop as shutting down McMinns and Clark. Eight seconds to the three minute warning here in the second half. It'll be LeBlanc to make the kick to kick it back off for the Mariners for Perhaps one final drive. We may have not seen the last of this football game. A big boot caught by Cunningham with one hand. And he's going to make his way up the left side, dodging one tackler. And again, another one he sheds. Still up that left side, but taken down. And the ball is loose, but it looks to be recovered by the Mariners at about the 36 or so. Cunningham, a great individual after as he was able to shade a couple tacklers. As you can see, great outstanding catch with that one hand there. Started to run back at his own five-yard line. And it looked like White. Look at White. Whoop! Great putt. Nice shake and bake move up the sideline there. Sheds another block. Another tackle, excuse me. Not good form tackling there by the special teams of the Mustangs. And he was definitely down by contact. And it will remain... Mariners football, so a good call by that side official coming up the sideline there. Andrew Bubar getting the spot right as the Mariners look like they will start from their own 35-yard line. That should be the call on the play, and it looks like Cunningham's in a lot of discomfort right now, and I'm not sure if the medical staff here at the field are either calling a... Uh, an ambulance but it looks like she is on the phone and I'm not sure who she's calling he's in a lot of discomfort right now and his teammates are hovered over him and having a conversation with him but it looks like the right leg there Mike is the issue with Cunningham and let's hope that it's not a not an injury he can't bounce back from you can see in the replay here Trying to break some tacklers, trying to gain as much yards as he can. It would just look, oh, you can see that right leg, that foot getting caught inside the turf as he was bent over. Multiple tacklers coming and the weight down on that leg, either the right leg or the left leg. And it looks like the left leg looked like he 
hyperextended maybe the knee and it looks like the medical staff are holding the knee and they are calling an ambulance for Cunningham right now and if we can see in that replay it definitely looked like the right knee is definitely uh, out of sorts and we got we just hope and pray that uh, Cunningham doesn't suffer any type of you know, major injury but it looked like that right knee wasn't in a good place. No, that's for sure. The tackle from Simon Engelhart, the Chandler Quebec native, 23-year-old, making the tackle on special teams on Cunningham, and you can see his teammates in the back. Yeah, they're nailed down, and they're there. No, they know that uh, right now Cunningham's in a not in a good space. And we can't see from this vantage point, but in that replay, you definitely could see that. The body was going one direction, knee and leg and foot was stuck, planted in on the in the turf, and the knee went the opposite direction. So let's hope that it's not a major injury, but it's one that it looks like there's an ambulance being called, and he's going to be carted off the field here because they are not moving him at all. Yeah, Cunningham is on the phone. He gives the thumbs up, which yeah. is... A that, good sign. That's a good sign from here, and I'm not sure if he's on a cell phone talking to somebody or not, but it looks like he may be talking to somebody, but this is strange. He's actually talking to somebody on a cell yeah, phone. Yeah, he texted and sent a call <laughs> while he was on the, on the field. Well, I don't know quite. Of course, we can't tell who he's talking to, but at the same time, he did give a thumbs up and then a, some choice words out into the air, so who <laughs> really knows what's going on, but... It's a good sign that he gives a thumbs yes. up at the very least. Yes, absolutely. He looks like he's still in good spirits. Yes, there has been an ambulance so. called. We just get the announcement over the PA. Brian Frontaine making that announcement as it is 2.56 to go. And it may as well be a time to recap some of our scores, some of our positions in terms of the way that the game has shook down. It was Aubrey Ellis with a touchdown. Four plays in for the Mustangs to give them a lead. The point after was missed and that's turned into a bit of a pickle for the Mustangs perhaps. You've got Josh Dickinson with a touchdown later on. First off, McMinns with that big home run throw from Dave Clark to make it 7-6. Then Dickinson makes it 13-7. That's where we wrapped up in that first quarter. We had a Clark touchdown to make it 14-13 at the half, and we were sitting here thinking, oh, it's going to be a whole bunch of scores, and then that really hasn't happened since no. then. Though The it's Mustangs have been able to put a couple of touchdowns together. Mulally with a great shimmy shake from the slot back position, takes the handoff, runs his way in through the, the uh, right to the left side, and then Comfort as well with the run from the right side, and Clark got a touchdown of his own. It is 26-21 as uh, we await the injury on the field here. Maritime Football League on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Maritime Football League on Rogers TV. 26-21 is the score with 2.56 or so to do here in this fourth quarter, but we do have Neil Cunningham who is down on the field. He has given a thumbs up, but there is an ambulance coming to recover him. He got a bit of a blow to the leg, so with that he is seeing a little bit as we see the ambulance here. He's in certainly a lot of pain, and there with a teammate and the medical staff as we see the ambulance rolling its way up, which is a good sign as there's still three minutes of this exciting football game to play. Yeah, lots of football left. It's been going back and forth. It turned into a defensive battle in the second half where both of these teams have made multiple stops, snuffing out good drives by both of their offenses. But uh, it's been the difference of the Mustangs' fortitude being down by one at the halftime break. A lot of opportunity for them to blow this game wide open in the first two quarters. Didn't happen as the McMinns and Clark show took over in the second quarter for the Mariners, and they were able to get that 14-13 lead. But you're, if you're the Mustangs, you've got to be happy with the running game. Aubrey Ellis was able to rip off some big runs, but the run got snuffed out by the man that's waiting for the ambulance right now. Cunningham was able to break up that initial drive at the start of the third quarter and get his ball 
his head on the ball and forcing that ball out and snuffing out that drive. But it's been a defensive battle in this third and fourth quarter. And here we are as we're waiting on the ambulance to cart off Cunningham, who's it seems to be uh, that he suffered a major injury to his right leg as he got rolled up on as he was able to, he was trying to attempt to break a tackle on the kickoff after he made an outstanding catch at his own five yard line was able to break up multiple tackles in that return but uh, he was definitely rolled up on and um, now he's down and let's hope that uh, he comes out of this uh, relatively unscathed and hope this is just a precaution and not a thing that he'll need some major uh, surgery to that right leg as we had an opportunity to see in the replay before he went to break. Yeah, certainly didn't look very good in the case of Cunningham and really in the case of the Mariners, a bit of walking wounded as Ryan Dempsey gets hurt in the second play from scrimmage for the offense early in the first quarter. Uh, Eugene McMims has been battling in various parts of consciousness throughout right. throughout this game, but really any time he's had a pulse, he's been able to put some good plays together, but yeah. certainly looks worse for wear. And now Neil Cunningham, key players for the Mariners, seem to be getting hurt. Yeah, key players going down, but I'm not sure if, if Dempsey w was to go down that we would get the opportunity to see this McMims show because uh, Dave Clark, you know, I mean, no disrespect to him. He's no, no drop-back passer and uh, a pocket passer quarterback. He showed great plays using his legs and making plays with his legs on the evening, but when it comes to throwing the ball downfield and stretching the field with his arm, that ability is just not there. There have been multiple times and opportunities for the Mustang defense to turn the football over after Aaron passes by Clark that looked like they were going to be picked off by the defense. The defense just unable to corral it and pull down the interception. So they were able to dodge those bullets offensively. But when they hand the ball off and use the misdirection in the pitch to McMims, McMims has been very good as he's able to make the first and second guy miss and get into the defensive backfield for the Mustangs and make a big play with his legs. Yeah, there are times... Clearly when Dave Clark has the ball in the pocket and you look and that's a running back. There are many times where you look at that and he was and was a very prolific one for many years in this league. Right. But there are times when he sits back in the pocket and he sits in a position where he's got to make a throw and that's when you can really disturb and get in his kitchen a little bit. And we've seen that from the Mustangs right. throughout the game where he's struggled when he's been forced to pass. All, as long as they can keep him inside that pocket and force him to be a passer, they're in good shape. That is the Mustangs defense. When things get a little raveled and undone is when he gets outside that pocket and he's able to use his legs to make plays because, as you mentioned, he turns into a running back and those instincts of a running back take over. And he's displayed that this evening where he's able to get into the open field, make guys miss, and score a big touchdown off a of misdirection after they use McMims as a decoy. And it really has been that decoy play that's been effective as the Mustangs have been effective rushing three they've been effective rushing four been effective rushing five but for Clark it really hasn't mattered as long as you shed the one guy in front of you those guys can be on the other side of the field as much as they want but Clark's got open field ahead of him yeah absolutely and he's very good in the open field and so is McMims if they get into the open field and they can get into that defensive backfield they're gonna you know eat yardage up because they got the ability to put that extra burst when they're taking on the tackler and uh, we've seen it all evening long but the Mustangs are in good position right now. The Mariners are going to start deep in their own territory. We're just coming under three minutes to go here. We won't probably expect to see a whole lot of passes going down the field from Clark. Says you got to expect that they need to zero in on McMims and they got to zero in on Clark and keep Clark in that pocket and force him to be a passer and not a runner. Yeah, it's been Clark, McMims, and a little bit of Richard Lush in the second half in terms of pretty much the offense. Not a lot of receivers really open. There was a nice pass by yes. Roy Garon. Garon coming up with a huge catch as he was able to battle the defensive backs and basically out-duke them, actually out-jumped them and corralled that errant pass. And it wasn't a crisp pass. If you look at the replay, it looked like he had a great drop back. He, was, he had a good tempo. He looked like a quarterback, but once he released the pass, it was a lame duck that was pretty much anyone's ball. And Garon was in the right position coming down and securing that 
that football. That set up that touchdown run for McMims to score, to take the lead initially. But uh, the Mustangs answering, coming back with their own drive after a short kickoff and a secure of the football by Stevie Cormier. Cormier setting them up and putting them in uh, Mariners' uh, territory. And then it was the running game. The running game, Aubrey Ellis has been good, very good in the second half and throughout this football game. The only mistake Ellis had was a turnover on the first drive of the third quarter where he coughed it up on a good run downfield, unable to secure the football. Ball security has been probably the only issue on one drive, on one carry for Ellis. But that decoy run where that play action pass, it looked like it was a pass on a rollout, wide open for Dan Comfort and Comfort's did the rest with his own ability to run downfield. And we mentioned it multiple times in the first quarter. He has the ability to drop back, pick the defense apart in the passing game. But when he gets the opportunity to use his legs, he can beat you as well. And he did an outstanding, do an outstanding job excuse me, extending at the, dr at the, uh, the uh, goal line, extending the ball out and getting it in. And then here we are at a 26-21 stalemate and just waiting for... Cunningham to finally uh, cart it off here. As you can see, that right leg is heavily bandaged. And let's hope that it's a not a long time effect on that right knee. And it's just a precaution that they have it wrapped up. And they're actually going to take him in to the hospital and take a look at that knee. Probably need an x ray and maybe a, an overnight stay here in Moncton for this PEI native. Yeah, it might be a long stay, at least a long night, for Neil Cunningham as he's on the tough board to make his way to the stretcher and make his way into the ambulance. Mustangs coming into this game are 1-1 one one on the year. They fell 21-7 here at Rocky Stone to St. John to open up the year on June the 3rd. Uh, got a 21 nothing win last week in in uh, Cole Harbor. Cole Harbor Turf against Nova Scotia. That's a big shutout. Their next game is next Friday. Not quite sure exactly where, but it will be a home game against Nova Scotia. As Cunningham makes his way to the stretcher now. And the Island Mariners, they fell 20-6 to on May the 27th in, I guess you can say, their first game, depending on how you want to see the Privateers' franchise records and however they want to see it. 20-6, to dropping in Cornwall at the Terry Fox Complex, and last week they fell 37-13 at Shamrock Park in St. John. Uh, their next game is next week, next Friday, against St. John. That is the... Terry Allen game at the UPEI turf. They're honoring one of their former managers who passed away from cancer in April, so that will be a pink game for them. That's a very important game for them with St. John in town. The playoffs will start on the 22nd of July, and the Maritime Bowl 16 will be July 29th is what we're looking at here for what will be a very interesting Maritime Bowl. It was the Mustangs and the Wanderers last year, and Wanderers have won the last four straight. Yeah, the Wanderers definitely a dynasty once again. Uh, in this Maritime Football League. But the Mustangs, they had their own dynasty in the early 2000s where they were able to reel off four straight themselves and not lose a football game in four straight seasons. So they know what it's like to hoist the McIntyre Cup and drink out of that cup as the champions. They're trying to taste that this season as they think that they might have the recipe to beat the Mariners as that first game, as you mentioned, was only a six-point win for the Wanderers here at Rocking Stone Field. So they can play with the Mariners, uh, sorry, the Wanderers, but it's only, it's going to come down to disciplined football. It's going to come down to which team really wants it and which team is going to execute the game plan. And I heard through the grapevine talking to Coach uh, Jason Terrace before I had an opportunity to interview him. He, he mentioned that this team has a very good chance of getting it done, but they need to take care of the opportunity tonight. They need to take care of the Mariners who created a lot of problems and a lot of issues in some key areas for them and have made it difficult. They have made this defense look at times very, very not good. Like I, I want to use another word to <laughs> explain it, but they have made this defense not good, in particularly the two players for the Mariners and Dave Clark and Eugene McMinns. And we just keep saying those names because that's all they had. That's all the Island Mariners have offensively. But that's all they have needed because they're within a touchdown 
an unconverted touchdown of taking this lead and stealing this football game. Because when you create at least close to 200 yards of penalties, especially on the road, you have no business winning a football game. And you have a running back at the quarterback position that can't throw the, the ball downfield and force the defense to play honest. You have no business of winning a football game. But here's the opportunity right now for this defense to continue the great play that they've had in the second half. Yeah, this is right. This is a football game. So we've got just under three minutes to go with the Mustangs clinging to a five-point lead. The Mariners through the effort of Neil Cunningham at around the 35-36 yard line. It'll be Clark under center. A hard snap count. He'll pitch it back for McMims Again, names we've said a lot in the last 10 minutes. McMims taken down on a grab on a tackle from Kenge, but he grabs about eight before he's taken down. Yeah, Kenge, good play on the backside, not giving up on it. Was able to take down McMims, but once again, McMims making that first guy miss and a good job of sealing the edge for the Mariners. Clark again under center here, second down and short. Pitch again to McMims. He's going to go again to that right side. He's going to make it for a first down and then some taken down around the Mariner 54, and he's down in a little bit of discomfort. Yeah, and he's not... Get, he's getting up very slow, and he might be shaken up as well. Now you see multiple players for the Mustangs. Let's take a look here as Clark once again sealing the edge on the double block here on the defensive end. As we, uh, you could see it initially before it didn't roll, <laughs> but trust me, that was set up by Clark rolling out, and he's been very good blocking downfield for his battery mate McMinns. Yeah, you can see Clark really getting with those running back techniques, and not just with the football, but without it as well, as he takes his own number, and he'll run his way up the gut for about nine, and this Mariner offense, after the break, is certainly yeah, showing no worse for wear. They have come out with a spark and a sense of urgency on this drive, and it's been all run. And they have the Mustang defense on their heels right now. Well, no flag on the play for that, but Clark has the football stripped. It'll roll out of bounds. Thought there might have been an early jump by the Mustangs on that play, but Clark's able to take it up for a first down around the 44 or so. So head coach Jason Terrace gambling with his offensive guys now playing defense. As you can see, Malali playing that halfback position along with number 87, Brown, who are your starting wide receiver and slot backs playing halfback now. So they must be some of their best athletes and two-way players. They're playing defense now trying to contain and shut down McMinns and Clark. Yeah, trying to keep that field from getting stretched too far as Clark goes right under center with a fresh set of downs. One man in motion. He'll toss it back to McMinns. McMinns with some open field on the left side. He gets taken down around a gain of four or five. Good open field tackle there by Bobby McIntyre taking on McMinns. Stepping up and not allowing McMinns gain any more traction downfield. I'm not sure who's down, but... It looks like maybe the wide receiver for the Mariners. Not able to get to his feet. But it's been all run, Mike, and you can see the recipe of success as they are driving the field and they are, chunk, they are gaining chunks of yardage with this running game. And it's not, it's not like it's uh, rocket science. They're basically handing the ball off or pitching it deep in the backfield to McMinns. And McMinns is making one cut and getting upfield. But you got to hand it to the, Mariner, the Mariners' front four. They are sealing that edge right now, and they are blocking like there's no tomorrow right now, trying to get that first win on the season. It's Chad Blanchard, the injured player, who gets up on his own power. We'll have second down and about five from the 38-yard line. It's Clark trying to move this offense to put the Mariners in position to take a lead here and that missed two point conversion could come back to haunt the Mustangs. Another pitch to McMinns and he'll have a look on the right side now and he's met by one player. Instead he'll cut back to the middle and another spin move. He's got a first down and taking a chunk again out of this 
field in front of him, the Moncton side. Oh my goodness, what a spin move in space. It looked like he was going to get wrapped up, and he put a devastating spin move on Malali and basically left him hanging there holding his, his underwear, excuse the expression, in open space in the middle of the field. You really don't teach that type of football. As you can see here in the replay, Ken Gay trying to chase him down. Poor tackle there, and, and Bobby McIntyre unable to make a play, and just that beautiful spin move in space as Malawi just grabbed air. Clark drops back five steps. He puts it way up in the air to a wide, wide open, open wide receiver. Cannot make the catch. That's 87, Sebastian Roy Garant, who had to look behind him. Was the only one there, but couldn't come down with the football. But you can see an unconventional quarterback, and not a drop back passer, not able to deliver a clean ball to Jack Garon. Garon was wide open in space, and just the delivery of the football, just an ugly football behind him, and that's a very tough catch and a very tough you know, situation for your receiver to try to make a play. You're asking a lot when the ball's thrown behind you, and it's not really thrown that you know, crisp. It looked like it was just a lot of uh, rollover, and it was more of a duck, but you, you got to give it up to them. They are still trying to throw the football, even though they can run it effectively. And now it will be the run. McMinns will cut to the left side to dodge a tackler, but instead Beautiful. he's taken down Bobby McIntyre. Beautiful open field tackle. Text form tackle there. Textbook tackle, excuse me, by Bobby McIntyre coming up from his halfback position in the open field and taking down a very tough McMims. As you can see, McMims gained the edge there, able to shed a tackle there, but coming out of nowhere was Bobby McIntyre wrapping him up and securing that right leg. That was definitely a touchdown saving tackle by McIntyre. A huge moment in this play, in this, excuse me, in this drive and in this game for this Mustang defense. And it looks like McMims is holding his left hamstring. And McMims, who's taken a lot of abuse throughout the game, just can be a case of having the ball as many times as he has and getting tackled as much as he has. As He's trying to make his way up and will get up here under assist. It does look like that left leg, be it the hamstring or further down, but with a buck and five to go for the Mariners, it just keeps getting more and more shorthanded, and can they pull a rabbit out of their hat one more time? Oh, I, I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised, but it's a big opportunity right now for this Mustang defense to step up and make a play and shut down the Mariner offense. Dave Clark looks to be lined up at shotgun as both teams will be ready to go here as the clock will run down again. Clark in back. He'll settle in, wants to pass. Instead, he'll let it go, and that one is caught over the middle. And a nice grab by Roy Garreau. And that one will be a first down. Yeah, that was a huge catch there in the middle of the field. Clark finally looking like a quarterback. Fired a strike over the middle. Had all day to throw, but that's all due to the effect of the running game. As they've been able to run and break off some large chunks of offense here, and that sets up that easy pitch and throw. Clark had a lot of room opened up by the lineman, but couldn't go too much further than that initial burst. He's taken down by the left side around the 10-yard lines. That'll be a gain of about five. And you got to think this is fourth down ter territory all the way as a field goal helps them. <laughs> it does not help them at all. They need a touchdown here to take the lead as it's all on the hand or the feet of Dave Clark here. He's, but he looks like he's lining up to pass the football. It's the shotgun for Clark, but it's a handoff and in the hands of Trewin. Trewin tries to make his move, but he's caught behind the line of McIntyre scrimmage. McIntyre again. Bobby McIntyre jumps in and a couple of key tackles on this drive from six in black. Yeah, poor, poor blocking by your wide receivers as McIntyre was able to come in untouched and great form tackle in the open field, an easy tackle by the veteran McIntyre as he is able to keep him from getting into the end zone. It'll be a timeout call by the Mustangs. They have their two left. They're gonna make a timeout call here, but 20.7 on the clock. It's getting down to crunch time and two chances here for the Mariners to punch it into the end zone. And it looks like Eugene McMinns is ready to go, but because he suffered that injury, 
It looks like he's un in the oh, I'm not sure. I'm, I can't really see from this sideline if it's McMinn's that is ready to go or another number that's ready to go over there. But I think he's still being assisted by the medical staff, being looked after. But it looks like he definitely would have to be out because he's he was able he was suffering an injury. He would have to come out for at least three three plays. But uh, it doesn't look like McMinn's is going to come back into this one as he's continuing to uh, spend his time in the medical staff area there. It looks like it from this vantage point, Mike. I'm not sure. Your eyes may be better than mine. It is hard to tell. If McMinn's was able to make his way out, that'd be, be so, very, <laughs> so very Willis Reed of the Knicks coming out in the 70s <laughs> to try to put it in, and yep. that would be a phenomenal play if he were to do it. But third down is up here for the Mariners. Third and about nine and a half. The ball on the 15. Dave Clark. Can he put it into the end zone? He's going to line up in the shotgun position. Trewin on the side. Two in motion. Clark sitting back, looking to his left. He'll airmail it up and out. Nobody home. That one is picked off. Yes, picked off. Intercepted. So finally, and it looks like Brown able to make the play. Brown unable to garner the touchdown, or excuse me, move the change playing the receiver position, but he doesn't make any mistake playing defense and securing this win for the Mustangs, intercepting the ball. As you can see, going for it all is Clark. Double covered is the receiver. Good job there by Brown. Brown making the catch and getting his feet in. Makes it look like the receiver he is. He was the intended receiver was, on it, that From play. the looks of things, the ball was up in the air and nobody was there within 10 yards. They had to scramble underneath it. But Brown, some redemption in his yeah. case. A couple of key hold calls exactly. earlier in the game and coming in here with the key interception. Yeah, he made up for that drop pass on that two-point conversion that would have stretched the lead to seven and forced a converted touchdown to force this game into overtime. So you got to be happy for, for Brown as he able to, he's able to make a play for his team in securing this win. 14.1 seconds left to go here in this one, but it's all done except the crying. Moncton with a five-point lead and what will likely be a five-point win. They would improve to two and one on the year, and the Mariners, who got oh so close despite some preparatory undiscipline, were able to push their way to within a touchdown, but they will drop at most likely to 0-3 oh as Comfort will take the knee. as it is 13.5 to go on the clock and second down. Clock is running. They'll wait for the final tickoff for the seconds to go. Mustangs will take advantage of a five point victory here at Rocky Stone as Dan Comfort will take the knee and the Mustangs will improve to two and one on the season with the 26 21 victory over the Island Mariners who drop to 0 and 3. It was touchdowns from Aubrey Ellis, Josh Dickinson, uh, that is Gloden Mullally and Dan Comfort. For the Mariners, two from Dave Clark and one from Eugene McMinns, but it was not enough as the Mustangs get the five point victory at Rocky Stone Field as we will come back with Vince Williams down in the field coming up after this.
Okay, he's got Dan Comfort, okay. And a game that was pretty tense, but ultimately a win for the home side. A 26-21 victory for the Mustangs over the Island Mariners. We go down to the field for Vince Williams, who's joined by the signal caller of the Mustangs, Dan Comfort. Welcome back to Rocky Stone Field. The Moncton Mustangs get it done 26-21. They beat the Island Mariners, and I'm here with the player of the game, the quarterback, the star quarterback, number two, Dan Comfort of the Moncton, Mon the Moncton Mustangs. Tough win tonight, Dan. You guys were, it was back and forth. You were down 14 to 13 at the half. Lots of opportunity to score in the first two quarters, but your offense right at the ship in the third and fourth quarter. Speak a little bit about the offense and how they got it done. Well, today I think we started off a bit slow. Uh, we were able to move a ball a lot in the first half. We were making critical errors with some turnovers uh, like halfway through a drive. So we were able to clean it up a bit in the second half and try to drive the ball a bit more and take it easy and were able to get the win at the end. Yeah, you talked about those opportunities. You had the opportunities early, um, couldn't finish drives. But in the second half, Coach Terrace decided to run the football with Aubrey Ellis. And then you were doing your job of delivering the football downfield, pretty much took over in that fourth quarter. Speak a little bit of both those adjustments. Uh, well, we started off with more passing. We thought we could uh, exploit that, but when we saw we were making small mistakes that were critical to the drives, we felt we'll just go back to the back to the basic offense, some basic uh, smash mouth football, and uh, run the ball and just try to eliminate all the complicated things we have and just give it to our good athlete and run the ball down their throat. Game in the balance. Your good athlete Aubrey Ellis was chewing up the uh, field with the great runs inside. Your big big boys were getting on their blockers and making sure that they were giving him time and space. Yep. Take us a little bit through that final drive where you were able to get it into the end zone and deliver the game-winning score. Well, I think it really what set it up was all the inside runs we had been doing uh, during the last second half. Really, we were running it hard, and then. For me to just keep it on an outside run, uh, the O-line with all their good blocking and the running back sold it well, so really it was just a little little stroll for me. And going forward here, what does this team have to do in preparation for the next game? We have to keep doing the, the plays that uh, are, are basic plays. Uh, we know we can move the ball, we've shown that, we just have to clean things up. We have some critical errors that make us fumble the ball or throw interceptions. We have to clean that up and hopefully uh, next game we can uh, really deliver well on offense. Thanks for this, Dan. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. That is the star quarterback of the Moncton Mustangs, Dan Comfort. The Mustangs get it done 26-21. So for my broadcast partner, Mike Sanderson, I'm Mike, I'm Dan, I'm Vince Williams here at Rocking Stone Field as the Mustangs win 26-21. Thank you for tuning in to Rogers TV and Mustangs Football. We'll see you later.